Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> well, it's not Friday yet, but it's almost Friday. We got another three hour, 15 minutes. But welcome back. It is a Thursday night, so you know what that means. That means it's beer flow night. Get your beer on. Rajay Beer Ventures in the hizzle for shizzle with my crew. Got my boy Joe from Buffalo. Got my just, boy Todd from over in the Big I. That's Indiana. And up north, Michigan, we got my boy Eric. And Eric's got a new channel, so we'll let it you update on that stuff. And he's rocking. He's holding the uh, Get Your Beer On t-shirt as well. So tonight, thanks for everybody joining the show. We're going to be taking a look at Dogfish Head as kind of a feature beer of the show this weekend. And we'll talk a little beer news and some other beer updates and stuff like that. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get it started. How you guys feeling tonight? Let's do this. Doing good. I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling great, but I just want to clarify that when you said there's three hours and 15 minutes to Friday... That that doesn't mean the show is going to be three hours and fifteen minutes long. Just no, just clarify. That's that. why I feel like a drunk. <laughs> yeah, this is not a. Yeah, but, you know. but it could be. We're not taking dr- the drunken one title. <laughs> you didn't get the heads ringing because we're talking dogfish heads. So mm-hmm. that was the track. A little Dr. Dre tonight. Drop that in there. Go a little West Coast. Joe going to give me a yay yay for his ice cube. So yay yay. So we'll go ahead and uh, get into a little bit. Would you guys got any beer news this weekend, this week, or anything, or what? I do not. I do not either. Well, shit, you guys aren't too lively right now. <laughs> I'm prepared. I got the dogfish head segment, so I don't know about anything else. Very informative. <laughs> hey, America, America is no longer Bud's beer. That's a piece that's out there right now. So Bud sales are falling in the U.S., um, fell 5.6% in the third quarter. So They said it would well, never happen. They said both. Well, they're going to come out with a reformulated uh, pre-prohibition beer or something. People are drinking prohibition. Like, what is this? This has taste. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I kid. I kid. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's kind of a little bit of a shock caught people off guard. And then up around New England, they're starting to ask the questions if there's going to be a bubble burst. So I guess a lot of the New England breweries are really picking up a steam where it's getting really to be like almost overcrowded of stuff up there with the New England IPAs. Yeah, you, you I'd say uh, no news is good news, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. yeah. You know what, though? When it comes to bubble bursting, I've been hearing that for a long time now, years. When's the bubble yeah. going to burst? I don't know. But tell me when it bursts instead of like theorizing when it's actually going to burst. You know, like all the speculation. Oh, it might burst in the year 2020. Just tell me when it does. Like, just give me an idea. Maybe we'll play Will Smith then. It didn't mean to burst your bubble. What? <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> the thing is, I, don't, I don't know that it will. It's like, uh, what's the difference in a craft beer and wine? There's so many yeah. wineries out there. That's that true. bubble has never busted, you know? It's. I don't think the bubble's going to burst as much as it's just going to slow down. You're going to see, you know, less breweries opening, some closing, and then you'll get to a point where everything's just even keel. It's just, it's going to be how it is. They just, right, it's just yeah. how it is. Is there, there, there's five, you know, fifty five hundred breweries or seventy five hundred breweries, whatever it ends be, just be like, this is what it is, and it's going to fluctuate a little bit, but for the most part, it's just going to be how it goes forward. So, yeah. I mean, I don't think we're to that point yet. Maybe soon, but I mean. Fucking new breweries opening up every day. Seemingly every day you hear about a new brewery here and a new brewery here. <laughs> new beer release this, new beer release that. But yo, that bubble's bursting. You can't get. Yeah, I think long. it's. Yeah, you I think it's down. still early in the uh, craft beer boom phase to to see a lot of weed out yet. Yep. Yeah. So I did make a. I made a slight beer run today. Oh, here we go. Oh no. <laughs> Just, Only you call in five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time I sell off the other twelve pack, it cost like five dollars for twelve. I got, but um, <laughs> I picked up one of the Uintal their Hellas Lagers, and I picked up which I don't, use, don't usually buy Liney Kugel, but they had their Oktoberfest, so I'm like, why not? They, you know, so mm-hmm. all in all, I end up having a twelve pack for about five seventy seven by the time said and done, six of each. Nice. Which I always like you and Tall's beers. They do some good stuff out of Salt Lake. So yeah, yeah you and Tall is not you into like some people pronounce. It's it's U I N T. It's actually the Native <laughs> American word you and Tall. 
alcohol. That's what it's supposed to be. But you guys are already cracking your beer, so what are you guys cracking open right now? I have a, uh, you know, seasonal here. Oh, my God. First pumpkin beer of the season for me, so Ooh. yay me or not yay me, but the pumpkin ale from Bob <laughs> I haven't had this in a couple years. One thing I've always liked about this beer is so many pumpkin Here's our here's our pumpkin ale. They don't tell you what the base is. You don't really know what the base is. It's just spiced. But this is actually this is a brown ale, and they you know they spice it nicely. I think it's nutmeg, cinnamon, and uh, nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice, and brown sugar. And it's nice to know that they put real pumpkins in there. They put spices, and they have a brown ale base. I've always dug the beer. It's kind of different than most pumpkin ales, and it's pretty damn tasty. Nice. What do you got there, Eric? Well, right now I'm I'm starting off with a, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, a Namaste White. Is that how you pronounce this? Namaste. Pardon? Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Right. <laughs> well, however you pronounce a damn beer. I do, it doesn't matter. I was just <laughs> you, you said if you you were asked if that was correct, so I I answered your question. I wasn't trying to be a dick. Come on, Eric. I love you. Uh, this is a Belgian style wit beer. It's made with. It says right here, ale brewed with orange, lemongrass, and spices. Comes in at 4.8% ABV. I'm kind of digging it. Even though I like my Belgian ales, this is, it's a good one. And I, a low I, ABV to boot. I think that's a nice take on I think the base is just a Belgian vit beer, you know, like in your Blue Moon shocked up style, but really good. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like, a, like a step up. I really dig yeah. that one, too. I like that. I think we do just lemongrass, you said, in it, right? It's nice that they have a little different take I'll, on it. Yep, and then I'm going to wrap it up with the Dogfish Head Indian Brown Dark IPA. Yay, yay. Nice. He comes in at 7.2% ABV. Well, I figured I'd give this a try, so I've never had it before. Yeah, you know, uh, that, I've had that before. That's pretty good, too. You know what's interesting about the labeling and, the, and, and how they present that beer now? They used to be one of my favorite dogfish head beers kind of still is, uh, but I don't buy it that much anymore just because there's so many beers, but they call it a dark IPA. They used to just call it a hoppy brown ale. Uh, so they ran I with the whole that. I remember I, that. The IPA acronym, right? Uh, IPA shell, just put dark IPA on it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it excites people, but it, it's, it's a hoppy brown. Ale. It's really good though. It's a good beer. Get excited. What do you got there, Todd? I am drinking the Oak Age Vanilla Worldwide Stout. Go big or go home, son. I ain't playing around tonight. <laughs> How is it, Todd? 16% 16, 16 ABV. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh -oh. Is that a nice session beer for you, Todd? Nice session beer right there? <laughs> this is, yeah, it's just, I'm going to knock down four or five or ten of these. Maybe sleep in just a little bit tomorrow. <laughs> 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 what a full if pack. If you see... Very cheap price of forty dollars. My eyes roll up in my head before we're done tonight. Uh, it's like <laughs> <a bee. laughs> and well, it's uh, I, uh, seventy IBUs. <laughs> nice. Well, I actually went with one that everybody pretty much knows here. This is the sixty-minute IPA. So one of the ones you'll find in a thousand and one beers to taste before you die. And it's solid. It's a solid staple. Like I said, everybody's familiar. And then I got the Sea Quench Ale which is one of my favorite ones that I found this year. Um, a nice session sour, nice refreshing quality to it. So I don't know if you guys have had this one yet, but I have that for the next one here. I actually have a, one of the Pennsylvania tuxedos in the fridge too, but that's on you. I might save that one there for a review upcoming. Paul should be here for that. Into the Pennsylvania tuxedo. <laughs> he knows a few things about the Pennsylvania tuxedo. We got a, actually, we got a pretty nice variety of dogfish beers tonight. Yeah, we do, and that's kind of the cool thing. Everybody's got kind of a little bit something different, so we don't have to worry about duplicating anything there, which keeps yeah. it a little bit more lively. I should, but I'm just gonna bust out the uh, vanilla oak age, so uh, you know the guys with two, the two guys with no channel could have done a nice duo review, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but when you guys do get your channel, people will know who you are. They'll say, "Hey, these are <laughs> your best friends, you know, I've seen their work. I know their resume. <laughs> Guys are solid. <laughs> well, do you have any of the information on Dogfish that you want to run down, Joe? What you, you want to do? The, you want to do the segment right now? You mean? I mean, we can, or we can come back to it. What do you feel? Yeah, it's it's, it's your show. 
You tell me. <laughs> it's not. Oh, I know. <laughs> I want to make sure you're comfortable so you can. Yeah, no, I got, I, I got. Whenever you want to do it, whenever you're, com- whenever you feel. I like mean, is... go to beer stories talking about how Toronto's becoming a big beer city. Yeah, why would we do that? And then, and then we'll finish you're jumping off with new craft breweries. Um, don't drink too many IPAs. They're saying because they'll get mantids. So I mean, what well, if you already have mantids? Then what? <laughs> you're in the game. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's what are you going to do now, IPA? You can't get more pregnant, right? So yeah, yeah, you got it. Right, you're, you're, yep. you're good to go. But it hasn't – I didn't see anything for any, like, takeovers this week. There hasn't been too much out there. <laughs> uh, I like how you say takeovers. Like, it's a bunch well, of – it's, it's like wrestling. It's like wrestling, like a bunch of ruthless individuals. This, this, this is the NWO circa, like, 1997. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen like Sting and Ric Flair and NWO order kick off or do anything, but uh, that, that would be a great way to do it. Like la- like when Wicked We got bought out, just a bunch of AB and Bev execs just start b- b- booting down fucking doors and <laughs> handing out RKOs and stunners and stuff. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> We're gonna take over left hand, Devon. Get the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as other beer news, there's not really a lot out there. Um. They're talking about college football, and Eric, you like this because you do a lot of sports stuff on your channel. Yeah. Which make sure you check out Eric's channel, Eric and Linus fan. And actually, what's your new channel name so they know that as well? Cheap Well, <laughs> I'm I'm taking my beers, my beer reviews, and putting them over onto another channel. It's called Eric's E R I C apostrophe S Beer Reviews. I'm kind of taking the beer reviews and putting them on one channel, leaving the sports channel just right there because I thought, well. <laughs> People coming to do beer reviews and they're coming to a sports channel like, what kind of what's going on with the channel here? So that's why I'm kind of separating them out. So the beer channel's kind of getting a reboot, and then my sports channel's just uh, just doing its own thing. So Eric is segregating his fans essentially. Yeah, so. Basically, <laughs> Eric's like LeBron James. He's taking talent to do another channel that he owns. So maybe not so much like LeBron. So here's a here's an interesting thing. Miami Beer Company brews alcoholic seltzer water. Alcoholic seltzer water. I have no idea where you go with that. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, no. if you're putting alcohol, you, water, beer is ninety percent water anyway. Yeah, I've heard a lot of things in my life, but one thing I've never heard from anybody was like, you know, it'd be great about seltzer water. What if it had alcohol in it? I see it like, right, <laughs> free ball, Just that's like, what I want because. I mean, I'll I say that all water. the time. You've never heard that before? No, no. I just ran people walk up to me, be like, "Yeah, I need some alcoholic seltzer water. Can't I can't do it myself? I need it pre-made. Come on." <laughs> That's kind of an interesting type thing there. So if you're down around Florida near Miami, don't check buy that out it. for us. Let us know oh. what you think. <laughs> I don't want a beer. I want alcoholic yeah. seltzer yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, twelve percent seltzer water. <laughs> Todd, we found our calling. We're not going to do beer reviews for alcoholic <laughs> seltzer water <laughs> reviews. Uh, yes. <laughs> we could corner the market if we get in early. But they're starting with grapes. They're starting to question college football games, and the fans are getting too drunk. Uh, they're seeing a hype, I guess, a spike in fights and bad behavior taking place and all kinds of things. Um, hmm. Which is interesting because, and it's not like a fight thing, but there was a video. I don't know if you guys saw this viral video going around. It was at the uh, Dolphins game, actually. And apparently, the guys were at the urinal, and some ladies walked in and got into the urinal and stood there and beat herself. And it was kind of like nobody knew what this was. Of course, some guy's running the camera. He's gonna, he uploads it. But it's like, <laughs> most of them had no idea what to do because most of them were also happy. Yeah, it was so far, so he's saying that they go through the whole thing about bathrooms being unsafe. I mean, they had no problem with her in there with them. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is always the worst. Might have uh, might have embarrassed some of them because hers was bigger than theirs. Maybe. <laughs> apparently, she's probably doing better hitting the, hitting the urinal too. Probably, so. <laughs> she probably got some nice high five on the way out. <laughs> yeah. Just see her sitting there. What's up? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so guys like me now. <laughs> Um, to do, do Northeast Ohio beer now, they're delivering wine, beer, snacks delivery. So that'll be nice. Snacks. So another company, another company's getting into delivering stuff to your house for you for alcohol. Nice, right to your doorstep. So we have in Cincinnati, we have Amazon that does that for us here. So 
Wait, did y'all, speaking of Amazon, did you see the thing where they're trying to do the Prime membership where they you give them a key and they can open your door and set the package inside instead of wow. leaving it on your doorstep? Totally trust that. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, you you like, so like how I'm testing out your beer that you ordered. <laughs> and like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why do they think that's a good idea? And who on earth would actually do that? Yeah, I, I think I'm pretty. I, I'm I'm a little bit more afraid of whoever's delivering my package. Maybe going to grab like a bottle of water from my house, or maybe money or whatever's laying around, than like my neighbor is just picking my package off the front, you know, front step. Like it's that sounds really dumb to me. You don't want him to get any of your seltzer water? No, that's mine. It has alcohol. In it. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see here out in LA more six packs of local craft beers are coming to store shelves apparently they're saying here that they see more six packs going to replace how people used to do more of the bombers so bombers may be getting phased out a little bit that's a win yeah you yeah, agree and of course you had that um I don't even know what it was. The whole outsourcing thing to try to buy Budweiser were pretty much more a waste of time type thing for the crowdsourcing. Don't know what that was all about. Did you see that? Like they were basically trying to start a crowdsourcing effort so they could buy out Budweiser. Yeah, I think I we uh, heard something about that. I can't. I, I forgot who show we discussed it on, but yeah, it's just a marketing ploy, is what that is. Yeah. To to make people understand, like you know that. There are a decent amount of breweries now that are owned by the big man. And a lot of people don't realize it, but they're like, yeah, we only need like, how much was it? Like a bit, like two or $3 billion or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're not going to get that in crowd, crowdfunding. Yeah. They said he raised like 1.9 million already. They only need like, I forgot how much it was, but yeah, they're not going to get there. Oh, it's Stranger uh, Things. You guys watch Stranger Things? Yep. Oh, yeah. Season two tomorrow. Good show. Uh -huh. Guess what? They got a cheap hopper beer coming out. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> did you just say you like Stranger Things? I did. You did? <laughs> oh, you did. did. Like you did. Like you said it. Not like you did like it. No, right. no, no. I do like it. Someone's wrong with a cheap hopper beer. I'm not just a said, oh boy. It's all super, super excited. <laughs> <laughs> Pumped up. If something successful is going to be marketed, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything I watch, I wanted all kinds of things that marketing by, like all my drinks, especially alcoholic seltzer water. I could, if I could get something branded by Stranger Things in that realm, I'd be happy. Yeah. You know, maybe some craft beer jellies, you know, whatever. Yeah. Had another 112 year old person celebrate her birthday with a beer. So that sounds pretty awesome. Less than you've been, no beer helps. Yes, it does. <laughs> she doesn't believe me, but yes, it does. But as far as other news, not a lot of other stuff. Founder CBS. Founder CBS. Oh, which one calls out now? The uh, regular breakfast style for founders. I saw that this week. Mm -hmm. And then the Canadian breakfast style is about to come out as well. Yeah, that, that's that's. So people go. Have you all had that? I have not. I was gonna say, is there? You get that a lot where you're at? Because I mean, you're right there in Michigan. It's, it go as soon as it's here, it's gone. I mean, people line up for that stuff. I had a lot of urban in the beer festival last summer, last year, and it's fantastic. Probably one of the top five beers I've ever had. It's like you need to know a guy to be able to get that beer in some spots. Multiple guys. Yes. <laughs> I believe uh, Paul said he was going to get a uh, a case of it, and I'm like, I think it's only 750s. I don't know if it's going to be in 12 ounce bottles, but if yeah. he gets a case of 750s, he better you know take out a second mortgage on his home. <laughs> Which he may do to buy more beer. That's true. <laughs> we'll figure twenty about twenty dollars a bottle times twenty four is going to be what four hundred and almost five hundred bucks. No. So what are you guys thinking about the new Prohibition beer? Are you going to try it? I'll give it a shot. I'll give any beer a shot. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking of trying. I'd like to see the what they've done with the malts on it as an amber lager, so I'll probably give it a shot. I'll probably get an individual, though, if I can, instead of getting a whole six-pack. Is it a non-alcoholic? think it's going to be? Is that what it is? No, it's alcoholic, but it's one they used for a recipe. They're saying back before Prohibition, I guess. 
Do you think it's gonna be true? To, uh, do you think it's gonna be true to to color there for what they're saying it will be? From stuff I've seen, like online and some of the uh, advertisements for it, it looks like it's gonna be pretty much true to the color and the maltiness should be there. I kind of think it's gonna be something close to what a fat tire would be. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, I jumped free, I, don't know, I guess. I don't know if they're using their trademark beach wood or not, but but I'd be interested to see what it takes. I know some groups I'm in, people are saying they're not going to try because you know it's AB and Bev or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot, see what it tastes like. Why would I not? I'm cur- I am curious. I am curious. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have much interest, but I mean, I, I see, I do see the allure to uh, trying it, you know. Right. Be curious to see how it is, but I, I, it's not. I won't. I don't care for it because it's AB and Vet Villain. It's, I don't care for it because I probably won't care for it. Type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not usually a huge amber red person, but I'll, I'll give it a whirl here and there and see what yeah. it tastes like. So, what's the worst case scenario? It's not that great, right? Yeah, exactly. Rod, you'll probably get a six pack for nine and cents anyway. So. <laughs> I know you guys all laugh about that. <laughs> I know we didn't even. Because it's probably true, Joel. Yeah, it is. It's 100% accurate. <laughs> deals, deals have been a little bit of favorable. I mean, I'm not the only one. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. A little? <laughs> a little? Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you I picked up. Let's not be modest now. Let's not be I modest. I told Joe I picked up a Not Your Father's Root Beer. They had the 10.7 here. Twenty-two ounce bottles, a dollar ninety-nine. It was like, like I had to pick it up at that price. For sure. You know? I saw your video on that. Yeah, you kind of almost have to. Yeah, if I drink a quarter of it, it's still a better deal. Ten percent, even if it's seltzer water, you have to pick it up for dollar ninety-nine. <laughs> <laughs> one dead, one arrested after fight over beer outside Florida Popeyes. That's on them. That sounds yeah. terrible. They <laughs> already made an argument. Over beer. I wonder if it was a craft guy t- going to a guy who was drinking a mask. Probably not. Someone probably took a fertility pack of Natty Daddy or something. You mean to tell me PBR is not the best thing under the sun? We're going to have to fight about that. <laughs> probably somebody got a Natty Daddy and got pissed off. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Next big thing in beer is being a small tap room. Small or maybe bigger. Huge. Tap rooms up here are starting to catch on. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody wrote an article that is close to my heart. Stop asking for beer and frosty glasses. Please, please stop doing that. No, continue does, to do it. Does it does it anger you, Rod? If you're not drinking in one of the macro lockers, you don't want it in their frosty glass. Unless you want a cold. And that's how you enjoy it. It comes out cold. It comes out if they're running their lines <laughs> correctly. Maybe they want to keep it at a solid 35 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all don't want to drink our beers at 90 degrees Fahrenheit like we're Paul. I mean, that's, yeah. you know. He <laughs> boils did. his sometimes before he drinks it. And I'm not even talking about <laughs> homebrew. I did catch Joe D's broadcast the other day for part of it. And uh, Bum had actually showed where the new Anchor beer came out for the Christmas. So that's kind of cool. Uh, is it the, is it the uh, Christmas ale again? Christmas ale. And each year they paint a different tree on the on the uh, label. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I actually saw a few uh, winter lagers. I saw some guys yeah, winter lagers out now. I saw a couple other Christmas lagers coming out from some of the breweries already. And it's like that time of year. I actually, yeah. saw uh, Great Lakes came out with their blackout stout, Ooh. which if you oh, have to, so you have to see it, get it. Uh, mm-hmm. That's out right now too. I mean, why wouldn't these Christmas beers come out? Christmas is next week. Yeah, oh, wait, we'll, we'll two skip months away. Right? Oh, sorry, two months away. <laughs> <laughs> why isn't there? A, why isn't there like a Thanksgiving ale? That's basically all pumpkin beers. Yeah, but you could have like a cranberry type ale. You could have some other flavor that would favor like a Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah, I guess you could. I don't know. I don't know. This what do people think about Thanksgiving? Be like, I guess, I guess a sweet potato. potato. Beer, yeah, beer, gravy, beer. yeah, I don't want to be drinking no turkey and gravy beer. <laughs> I mean, I remember, you know, I remember if somebody gave you when it's a turkey and gravy, you probably still try. Oh, I tried the shit out of it. Like, <laughs> absolutely disgusting. Don't hit on that, Joe. Don't hit on that. You guys remember the, this was a while back, but Joan Soda Company, they came out with the turkey and gravy soda, and it was apparently nasty. So mm, you would yeah. think that. 
Good I'm imagine why. I no, imagine what? that would be. Again, I never heard anyone in my life be like, you know, it'd be great soda flare. What? Mm, turkey and gravy. <laughs> that would hit the spot <laughs> with. Someone came up with the idea of Crystal Pepsi at some point. So, oh. it's a great idea, a clear cola. Yeah. Epic fail. And it's like, yeah, you epic. blew my mind with that one. And then I came back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All because of the uh, YouTuber, uh, LA Beast. He's a guy that does a bunch of crazy stunts. And he uh, he actually yeah, bought a, an old um, Crystal Pepsi on eBay, like those 20 years old. And drank it and proceeded to vomit everywhere because it was twenty years old. And then he was, uh, he like was sending Pepsi messages and all stuff. And they decided to bring it back last summer, I believe it was. Yeah. Is he also the person to blame for Zima? He is not. Although we could <laughs> lay the blame on him if he wanted to. <laughs> Zima. All the clear, all the clear that things that should be. I don't think we have any more in our store. I mean, it sat there for a while on the shelves. You know, remind me of Thomas Joe, by the way. Yeah, I was gonna read him. Uh, I, I was gonna say before that, uh, what it reminded me of was when uh, Not Your Father's Root Beer came out a couple years ago, and yeah. that would fly off the shelves for a good couple months because people are like, "I can't believe it! It's a beer that tastes like root beer." It's like, all right, settle down, but I get it. And then, like two months later, just pallets of it everywhere, no one buying it. That's kind of how Zima was. <laughs> uh, comments: <laughs> We have Dina. She says, uh, "Hey, Rod, and everyone, hello." Hello, Dina. Hello. Hello. Uh, Craig from Kind of Beer Reviews, good buddy of ours. He says, "Hey, you guys, is he?" Hey, is you it... guys. Yeah, I was saying, <laughs> is this the Goonies? I mean, what's happening, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> Tim's Bruce says, "Cheers, cheers, Tim." Cheers, uh, Tim. A backwood, backwood Boondock Brew View says, "P A T Pat," like point after touchdown. Maybe we can need something else. <laughs> Go for two. Yeah. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> not doing that. Thirty-five year old or thirty-five thirty-five yard uh, PATs now. Uh, Tim's Brew also says, "What's up to Backwoods?" And uh, Backwoods did not respond to. We left him hanging. Not cool. <laughs> he probably he's probably, he probably not watching the video anymore. He's probably getting a beer right now. Right. He might be. Yeah. We'll see. He'll be back. Well, cheers to the comment section. And let's see here. I, I, I figure I, I think I figure out a little bit of the echo that you've had going on, right? Because it pops in and out. I don't know if anyone else knows. like right now it's a little bit, just a little bit right now. But what what's happening is, do you have a fan or something on? A ceiling fan. Yeah, it, I can hear it. It seems as though like a when that when that kicks no when that kicks up, like it's blowing the wind into the speaker, so it's carrying the sound into it. It has to be. It's the only time I hear the echo is when I hear the ceiling fan. It's crazy. But it runs totally. at the same speed. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I can't tell you. I think you're doing some weed over there, Joe. I am not. <laughs> Everybody else here heard the echo. I might be, but that's beside the point. <laughs> I think the point is. We're listening to Dr. Drake. <laughs> Let's see here. Drop that down a little bit. But uh, really University of Pitt, they dropped their trademark hammer. Well, Voodoo Brewery's pit theme beer. So now you got colleges that are actually say, "Hey, that's our trademark to a beer company." I like Voodoo's beer though; they make good beer. Yeah, they have a nice brew pub in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. It's only about a. I guess hour it's their H two P. It's the H two P. It's got yeah, like yeah, dollars. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pitt saying you're violating our tri our trademark. Yeah, of course they are. It's like Pitt. Like who's been? How's, Pitt has been relevant for how many years? Yeah, when I think about you know Pittsburgh University, I all automatically think about Voodoo Beer and Company <laughs> every time. I don't think about anything else. Like oh yeah, yeah Pittsburgh University. Oh yeah, Voodoo Brewing Company. Yep. Yeah, stupid. So One stupid. Bourbon County beer has already been pulled from the 2017 release. Oh boy, what happened? In fact, uh, let's see which let's see which one this one is. I think it was the barley. Uh, I think it was the barley one. Barley wine. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Barley wine, ale, aged in bourbon barrels. So it's a barley wine. Supposedly, it didn't live up to their tasting likes or something. So. It got a bugger seven in there. A little bit infected, probably. Yeah. Nothing like them well, being that, brought out had to do with it, though, right? Well, no, but that's good. That, I yeah. mean, 
the fact that they recognize it and they're not just going to throw it in the bottle and charge the ten, twelve dollars or whatever it's going to be, and have people buy it and then get pissed off. Yeah, here's a them for that. That, that you know, they're they're that's good customer service. That's that's yeah, uh, quality assurance. Like the old Rasputin. Yeah, and and then you send messages and just no one responds like at least they preemptively struck here in this situation so people don't have to spend their hard earned money and then uh, need to you know get a refund down the line like two years ago you know right yeah, they said it was the reserve barley one a barley one aged two years in barrels then two years in barrels that aged whiskey for 35 years or more recently how goose oh. island's 2015 release of bourbon county brass out won't reach the public because it didn't taste like we wanted it to I do well, want to. Well, where does it go? Is it like the teams that lose the Super Bowl? They just get the shirt sent to Africa somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> where is, where, I mean, I can understand you don't want to put it to the public, but where does it go? I might want to pick it well, up. What I was saying, really, 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 really crazy. crazy. Yeah. What, what I think is they find really good homes for it uh, in and around the Chicago area, most mostly drains where they pour it down it and then the drains happy. Because uh, I, I mean, I, you, I'd imagine you just pour it out unless they're going to save a bunch yeah. and see how it actually ages to see if it does, if they think it's infected or, if, as they say, not tasting right. Um, basically, they, they most likely think it's infected if they're pulling it off the shelf. See, this, but, the, the business part of me would say discount the shit out of it, however you want to discount it, yeah. and then sell it out to the public. Hey, this is like you're scratching dents. Yep. Three dollars. Take a chance. Out. It's a grab bag. Dollar ninety nine. Dollar ninety nine grab bag. It's like we're living in Cincinnati where Rod is. <laughs> At that point, it's like good fellas. It's all profit. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what's yeah, funny, really? I mean, that's a, they should do that. Really. It's yeah, funny they notice though, it. Yeah. The, the year was two thousand fifteen, right? That it was infected. Was that the year? Right, two years ago. Yeah. And you said yes. they aged that in the barrels, two thousand fifteen Bourbon County barrels. I wonder if they accidentally aged it or. Just put it in there and didn't realize it. Of those barrels might have been infected. Somebody screwed up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just spe speculating a little bit. Who knows? Somebody messed up on this one. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would just I discount it and be like, this one didn't meet the standards. You put a disclaimer out there, fifty percent off. You still get half your money back on it. Hey, if you let as long as you let the consumer know what's up. I mean, if you put it on your shelf for the regular 10, 11 bucks or whatever it is, and they buy it and they don't and you have a good idea that it might be messed up, infected, or tasting off, that's on you. But if you throw it out there, discount it half price, you know, two couple bucks, and the consumer buys it and you tell them it could be effed up, and then it is effed up, that's on them. Right. So either way, I mean uh, you know, yeah. not either way. That's the way to do it. And if they, I, hey, you would think if they have a lot of it, if they charge two or three bucks a bottle, yeah, it makes some money back. At least it's not a total loss. But uh, I'm gonna say the 60 minute is just as good as it always is. Nice that's an OG. It's a nice OG. I like the 30 minute. The 30 minute? Yeah. What did you just oh, catch the bottle? That, I haven't had that one. Wait, there's a thirty minute? I don't think there's a thirty. No, there's thirty though. Yeah, isn't it like a? Yeah, this is a they got a forty-five. They have a forty-five. Minute. Yeah. They did it like last year, right? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. remember. Yeah, I remember. It's like their session IPA. They came out with the thirty to cut to <laughs> sixty. Yeah, I'm it's like a sessionable. Like, wasn't it like a session IPA or something? The thirty yeah. minute. Just don't be a one minute. Nobody likes a one minute man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I'll, I'll admit I'm digging this Belgian style with me. They had a six pack, but I didn't buy it because I figured I'd buy one and be like, oh, "I'll see if I'll try it." I'm I'm digging this one quite a bit. So, what are your thoughts on that one? Uh, that's pretty damn good. I got to admit, it's not overpowering. The the you could taste the Belgian style yeast that they use. Um, I mean, you could get the lemon, the lemongrass, all that good stuff, the earthy style hops. I mean, I'm I'm digging it. I'm really digging it. I'd buy a six pack. Yeah. I just go ahead, Josh. I just, I just, I'm looking on tap because I I, I I never heard of a thirty minute at all, and uh, on tap shows there is no such thing as a thirty minute beer from my, a dogfish head. They have 60, 90, 120, 61, 75, 48, 90 minute thirty days. Maybe that's that's what you're thinking of, Eric. Because 
the I swore I seen a 30 minute IPA. Yeah, it might not, it's not from Dog. Uh, let me see if it's actually 30 minute exists in general from a brewery. Maybe as a local brewery or something. Um, 30 I'm, I'm with Rod. I thought I seen it last year. 30 minute IPA from Eclipse Brewing Company is the only one I see that's not a homebrew on. They are out of New Jersey, but their Dogfish Head uh, doesn't have the 30 minute IPA. Who's their session one called then? Their session IPA? Wasn't there uh, one they did lower than a 60, I thought, though? They, not they that. They got a 45. Yeah, they got the 45, but it's not. It's for, the 48 is the one you guys think of, not 45, it's 48 yeah. minute. Well, they do have a 45 minute also. Yo, know, the interwebs would call you a liar, Todd. I'm not. I'm saying the interwebs would say that you're, you're lying. No, I don't. I don't know. Like I said, I, I can't find anything on on tap. I can't find anything on their website. So, unless mm. Sam Calagione is being a douche right now and hiding all this great information, I think you're right. Because the 48 though is the 4.8 percent ABV. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. The, of the big releases that I saw, and I'm just pointing this out because I just want to. I just want to make sure <laughs> when I read all this stuff, I'm not missing beers. <laughs> Because <laughs> I did a little research, not a ton, but they have the 60, which is the one Rod drink in the regular. They have the 90, which is the Imperial. They have the 120, which is basically not an IPA, but it's, oh, it's still a great beer to try. Then they had, came out with the 75 minute, which was a blend of 60 and 90 brewed with maple syrup. Um, and then they had the, the 60. One I was thinking of. And then, yeah, 75. Then they had the 61 minute, which was with the, the grape, I think it was the grape juice, I believe they used. Not very um, good. And then, and then again, what I'm seeing on uh, Untapped is they did a 48 minute, which is 4.8, and then they did a 90 minute, 30 days, which I think is kind of like, um, yeah, they they only actually this is the 30 minute 90 day was only brew pub only, it was uh, bre brewed and then aged in Pinot Noir barrels and then stuffed with Amarillo hops for 30 days. So, um, I don't I don't deny that you saw a 30 minute at all either of you guys, but I don't know if it was Dogfish Head. No, I think I'm confused. I think it was a 40. And I remember there was a Cecil, and I just I was thinking 30, but probably you guys have me sweating over here. I just uh, this is, <laughs> I can't. I gotta be 100 percent accurate, which I'm never not. Well, you know the, you know the, you know the memories of drinkers. So yeah, well, we are drinking. So you know, there was probably at some point like a 22 minute. Who knows? It doesn't. Yeah. They need to Pretty stop confusing. Tasty. Pretty damn tasty. What is that? The. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Namaste. It's good. I, I like that one. It's solid. Damn, you like good. Good. Here's Todd. What are you thinking? Uh, this, yeah, this is solid. Uh, the Oak Age Vanilla wor Worldwide Stout. I would like I like to pick up another bottle of it and age it. And then we'll do a dual review. It is. Uh, it's a little warm, but it's it's solid. I mean, it's it's really good. I think it would mellow out a little bit as over time. And I'd like to pick up another bottle of it. Is it like Prestige Worldwide? <laughs> Prestige Worldwide. <laughs> I, I like how I like how uh, Todd had to preface that by saying, it's, you know, it's a little warm. It's sixteen <laughs> percent. Like nowadays, you have to specify because <laughs> you get so many of these like 10, 12 percent beers that don't taste like it. So it's like if you have to let people. Uh, everybody gets surprised when they're drinking like a twelve percent imperial stock. They're like, oh, it's a little, it's a little hot, it's a little warm, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot of alcohol in there. The twelve percent beer. <laughs> I'm waiting for Todd to break out a little Nelly. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Todd, I didn't hear. Give me, honestly, give didn't alcohol. know. Uh, honestly, didn't know it was that high in alcohol because it doesn't say on the bottle. It has the danger cap though, right? The green danger cap on it. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. That's how. That's it. when you get the danger cap from Dogfish, you know you're in for a, a treat. AK 15 plus percent. What's the danger cap? Oh, Look. right there. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Isn't that cool? I don't know if that's what that was. Huh? I don't know if it is, but it looks like one. <laughs> they should be if it's yeah. not. It's basically like slow your roll. This is 15 plus percent. You're in trouble. <laughs> this is good. It's good stuff. Good mouthfeel. About to open a sequence, though. Sequence is the go to now for a nice saltwater type feel. Yeah. Feel refreshing quality. You know what's you know what's crazy about the sixty minute though is like if people don't realize like that back in back in the day that was the jam like you, you, get, a, you get a fresh sixty minute I was like this is awesome now people try to compare it to all the stuff nowadays and it, and it and it pales in comparison from a sense that 
you know, that's an older recipe and it's tough, but it's it's still a good beer for what it is. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. Beer. You know, but it, you can't like bust out a New England style IPA or like a double dry hopped or like using all these crazy mosaic scissor hops and all this stuff and be like, oh, well, it's not as good as this. Well, <laughs> that beer was brewed two years ago for the first time. That brew was beer. Or that that beer was brewed twenty years ago. So I kind of I kind of uh, hate that aspect of craft beer in a sense too, though, because you kind of those 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 types of beers kind of get left behind. They do. I mean, there's uh, nothing really wrong with them. You know, there's nothing wrong with them. Well, think. Well, think it's about. How, it thing. Well, think about how many people. I mean, I think a lot of us are guilty of it, obviously, for sure, like one hundred percent. But like, if you see a beer on the shelf and it says Imperial Stout or Russian Imperial Stout, and right next to it's the Bourbon Barrel Age version or the Rum Barrel Age version, or whatever, which one are you grabbing? Rum Barrel. The barrel Age version, because it sounds better, and you and you and it's going to be unique. It's not a regular Imperial Stout, but more often than not. That base beer is just as good as that barrel, maybe even better, and it's like half the price. But we kind of lose sight of that because it's not the new you, crazy thing that you want to try. So, I mean, it's it just it's unfortunate how it is, but that's how it is. But whatever. I mean, there's no reason to complain nowadays. You you have you, the you option. You probably caught me out of the rum barrel pumpkin. I'm gr- I'm grooming I'm grooming you to to hate all southern tier beers. <laughs> <laughs> I had that a couple uh, about a week ago. I thought it was really good. The rum barrel pumpkin, and he had the yeah. the the, the uh, cold cold uh, pressed uh, cold cold brew coffee. Yeah, that was that was solid. Great. Nice call on that one, Joe. Yeah, that shit's great. Nice it really is. It is good. <laughs> yeah, that was that was good. Yeah, you ride these salty caramel yeah. one out there too from Southern Tier. Oh yeah, they have the the, the is it a porter like salty? Yeah. Salted I, I salted caramel chocolate porter or something like that, right? I gotta get it in the mix sooner or later. I know this is gonna sound no, crazy. Are you not a fan of Southern Tier by, by nature? No, I, I like Southern Tier. I'm just saying I'm oh, gonna okay. to hate it, but I'm still gonna like it. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry, Todd. I'm not turning heel on Southern Tier. They are a New York brewery, so I have to biasly love them. <laughs> so, Southern Tier is one of those breweries that I first like, you know, because they were local and I could get all their stuff. Like, I really came to enjoy most of their most of their bigger offerings, like their Imperial Stouts and all the different crazy stuff they do. Pumpkin, Th- that was for, for me where it was for them. A lot of their base stuff is just it's solid. It was never never hit home with me. I don't know something about Southern Tier is like IPAs and whatnot. They're okay. But you are the corruptor, so I was just checking. Yeah, no, I'll corrupt, I'll corrupt everybody. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. I, I'm the point man of this chat to groom and corrupt every single person. Here. So a man got locked inside of a... <laughs> what kind of segue? Segway? What kind of segue? Segway. Is this he got locked inside of a quick trip. Which I don't know where the quick trip is located at. It says Marshfield, but it doesn't tell me what state or whatever it's in. But he got locked into it, into the freezer or the cooler. Mm-hmm. So he just started drinking until they were quick come get him out. <laughs> so, sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. What, other, what else you got going on? He said he got locked in Wisconsin. He got, he got locked in about 1150 p.m. And so he decided he might as well just stay in the cooler and drink beer. Um, I guess they, problem. they closed at 12 and they came in at 550 in the morning and the police opened the door. There he was. He was all right, though. I mean, yeah, he said he laughed. He laughed. He'd have to pay for the beer because he had been locked in by an employee and had a free night of drinking. The least they could afford. <laughs> I feel if you get locked in a cooler like that and you and everything's cool when you get out of it, if some yeah. beer's missing, that's on them. Should well, he didn't them in there. as much as I thought he was. He said the manager told police the man had drank an 18 ounce bottle of beer. And three cans of malt beverage. Aww. He also had fallen over a stack of thirty can <laughs> beer packs, breaking three of the cases open. Are we sure that uh, malt beverage was an alcoholic yeah. seltzer bottle? <laughs> they did issue a citation for retail. Ingram's triple black. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in a cooler with beer. I'm gonna still get the malt. I'm going to the malt liquor. <laughs> if I had a couple of those Colt Forty Five blasts yeah. or whatever those things are. <laughs> That's the power of the malt. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's a good. That's a good little thing there. Oh, uh, it's hilarious. But what do you got on Dogfish Head now? A lot of nonsense, like usual. Should be a lot of fun. Here we go. Um, yeah. So this week's brewery spotlight is Dogfish Head Brewery, which everybody here vast experience with Dogfish Head because 
we're all in the East Coast, Midwest, so we get distribution of Dogfish Head and have for a long time. But if you're unfamiliar with them, which you shouldn't be, but you might, they are a craft brewery out of Milton, Delaware. Um, they were <clears throat> founded in 1995 by Sam Kellagioni. Um and the name of the everyone always is curious about the name of the brewery. Like, where did Dogfish Head come from? And you think it's like this cool, you know, story? No, not really. Sam used to have uh, he spent his summers as a child in a place called Dogfish Head, Maine. Very boring, very boring. But that's that's the truth. Uh, they produce two hundred and sixty-two hundred thousand barrels of beer annually. Uh, they really got popular in the in the early 2000s to mid 2000s between 2003 and 2016 uh they grew nearly 400 percent which that's pretty big growth in a short period of time uh a lot of people know them though if they even weren't familiar with them uh up to like five six years ago they're in a documentary called beer wars which was released in 2009 highly recommend if you guys have never checked it out it's really cool to see you know Back in the day, what what uh, craft breweries had to go through to get their beer distributed against you know the macro companies and just you know, the fight for uh, shelf space and the whole nine. Highly recommend that. And then they were on the Discovery Channel um, show called uh, Brewmasters, which I believe only lasted one season and fell out. Uh, pretty much it for the history of Dogfish Head. I couldn't find a line with their website. While awesome, if you want to check out their beers and all that stuff. I didn't find a lot when it came to the in, uh, history, but as I always say on here, if you want to spend five minutes, use that Google search machine that's so magical, you can find history, a lot of information on, on Dogfish Head. Uh, so uh, as far as the beers go, um, Dogfish Head's known for experimental ingredients, I guess. I mean, more or less, that's what they're known for, right? Crazy ingredients, and they're also known for like their ancient L. Um, series of beers where they take ancient beer recipes and then produce them uh, with with ingredients uh, from those recipes that they can find or try to replicate it. Uh, as far as like their beers go, uh, the best selling line of beers is you guessed it, their IPA series. They're sixty minute, they're ninety minute, not their thirty. I'm not sure. Don't I mean there could be like a five percent chance there's a thirty minute out there somewhere from Dogfish Head. We just I mean, it tells you, the website's not the greatest when it comes to, uh, like, history. But they do have a lot of their beers on there, most of them. So it, from that aspect, it's good. But 60-minute, which is their regular IPA, 90-minute, which is their double, their 120, which is their – it doesn't have a style. It's an American strong ale where you just – you know, it's it's hopped to high hell. It's huge. It's, like, 15 to 20%. And it ages extremely well. Uh, they also occasionally produce a 75-minute, uh, which is a blend between their 60 and 90, brewed with uh, maple syrup. And they do a 61-minute, which I believe, and and I could be wrong on this, and I could probably go just check, but I'm going to make an ass of myself because that's what I like doing. Um, I think the 61-minute, I'm actually trying to look it up, and I can't. But I think it's made with grape juice, some kind of grape juice. Uh, and I don't know if that's still, if you guys see 61-minute around anymore? Uh, let me take a look here. Because I want to say it's probably still in production, and people and they probably still make it, but I don't. I, they might have taken that out of uh, the rotation in in the uh, uh, maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah, I don't see. I don't think they actually produce that anymore. I know it was a big deal like three or four years ago, but yeah. So they're it says, uh, says it was brewed with Syrah, I guess S Y R A H. Great, great must. Was it great must? Yep. Yeah. Syrah. Yeah, great must. Yeah, that's like Syrah wine. I remember having it and having a distinct yeah, grape wine character to it. It, it. it wasn't so much as an IPA. It's more like a, uh, I don't know, like a slightly hoppy, like fruited beer. It was it was kind of weird. Uh, it wasn't yeah, and it pours like a pinky. I mean, I some, it pours like a pinky reddish color. I see some people checking in with it right now on draft. Wow. So, so maybe, maybe it's one of those things where they used to release it in packaging form in their bottles, and now it's maybe like draft only or something. Yeah. Because um, I can't remember seeing it. Uh, I had it in uh, I had it in 2014. Yeah. So they just purchased it at one of the places in bottle. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Um, it's seasonal. I think it just comes out one part of the year though. Yeah, I'm looking on their uh, their 2017 release calendar, and it's nowhere to be found. So I don't, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Doctor Shed, this is on you. All of it. Uh, <laughs> one comment says it is basically wine. Yeah, it's it's very wine forward. Um. As far as their year-round beers, they got the 60-minute, the 90-minute, 
the Namaste, which uh, Eric was drinking tonight and enjoyed, and the Sequench, which Rod is drinking. Although they call Sequench year round, but on their release calendar on their website, January, February, March. Now nah, we're good. Not going to release it. Only nine months, but it's year <laughs> <laughs> their, their flesh and blood IPA is also the same thing. They release it all year except for January because screw January. I don't know. Like we're just not going to release it one month out of the year. Just uh, like last week, a webmaster job might be out there for somebody. Yeah, 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 for sure. And uh, there, we discussed the sequence and the Namaste and everything else. And their flesh and blood, blood, I believe, is a blood orange, right? Or uh, uh, made yeah. uh, brewed with blood oranges. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, or fr they say fruit extracts. So. Yeah, I almost picked up that one. They're not fruit extracts. They said, yeah, no, it's blood orange juice and sweet orange peel. So yeah, I I, I think I had that uh, last year. It was pretty good. The Indian Brown Ale, uh, which is no longer the Indian Brown Ale, it's apparently a black IPA. Uh, <laughs> Eric has the bottle. You can show it. it. Says it says black IPA. Yeah, right there. Oh, sorry, dark IPA. Dark IPA. Dark. It's not black. It's just dark. I love it. It's well, a happy brown ale. If it's a happy brown ale, wasn't that just a brown IPA? <laughs> Maybe it was just a brown uh, IPA. Yeah, make it making things up, dogfish head. Uh, Palo Santo uh, Marone, which is their, um, I think it's, that's their imperial brown ale that is aged uh, on Palo Santo wood, which I've had before, and that beer is fantastic. Uh, I'll have to get that next time I get it. I just never had it. You have to. Uh, now, I had it fresh and aged. It was way better aged, and I know you probably won't do that, Eric, but it's such a good beer. I'd still just buy it fresh and try it because it's really good. It really is. Um, the Burton Baton, which is their Imperial Oak Aged IPA. Uh, as far as I know, uh, the first year they released it was 2014, but I don't think they had it in bottles until the late 2000s, like nine, maybe, maybe even 2010. But I think that was like one of the first oak aged IPAs that was like released in good distribution, not just like, oh, our local brewery has it. And that is another really tasty beer. Uh, you, even nowadays, you don't see a lot of um, oaked IPAs at all. You know, it's like. Yeah, that is a good one. I like, I, I like that one a lot. <clears throat> for sure. And then they, and then the other year round beer is their Midas Touch, uh, which is, I think, oh, yeah. that was the first beer they brew in the Ancient L series. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they 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 fucking um what you call it? they used honey something about the muscat grapes they've used that in so many different so many different beers it's kind of ridiculous but they call it like a a hybrid of beer wine and mead i thought it was weird i didn't hate it it's just weird it's different yeah and and that's their entire ancient ale series is basically that just different if you're in the mood you go to your beer store and you're just like hey I just want something intriguing and weird today. Just, you know, mosey on over to the dogfish head section, see what they got going with the ancient. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be surprised because they have so many weird beers in the ancient ale series. That is, you start reading the ingredients list and you're like, is this, well, I don't is this a beer anymore? Who knows? They're ancient, they're ancient recipes. Um, they're seasonals, which I found these to be funny because two of them, I've heard of, but I've never tr tried before, but I didn't realize these were technically their seasonals, but their seasonals in the late winter into spring is their beer to drink music, uh, or sorry, beer to drink music to. And the 2017 release, which came out this year, uh, was a, tro they called it a tropical blonde, uh, blonde ale brewed with kiwi juice and hibiscus flowers. Uh, any of you guys try that? I, I did not. I've had the beer to music before. I've actually got the little poster on the wall back here, but probably you can't see the glass. But. Was it this year's or the? Or it the was last thing? year's. Okay. Anybody else? I have not. I have not seen it. I haven't seen the new one yet. Huh. Wait, wait. Also, yeah, I looked for it. So it uh, it says the release date was February, March, April, May. Like I said, that's when it comes out. Earlier, so we must have missed it. Damn you, dogfish head. Um, <laughs> can't be everywhere, right? Yeah, no, we cannot. Their uh, summer seasonal is Romantic Chemistry, which is an IPA mm -hmm. with mango, apricots, and ginger. Yeah, that was another good one. Now, they, they released that for the first time last year, 2016. Um, and then their fall seasonal is Pumpkin Hell. That's their fall seasonal which is available through uh, starting in August because that's when fall starts, apparently. And uh, they have listed for the 2017 this year into the winter, so we'll be seeing this next month into December, their Liquid Truth Serum IPA, which, hmm. um, let's see. Let me see if I they have a release here quick at the brewery. I think I've seen that at the beer store today. 
It, it is an IPA that is brewed with three different hop additions throughout the whirlpool. This unique process makes for a beer that's truthfully hoppy without being deceptively bitter. So uh, they actually just posted the the packaging on uh, Friday the 13th, so a couple couple weeks ago. So, I, yeah, I, it should be here, like you said, if you saw it, Eric, and everyone should see it probably in the next couple of weeks. Well, what's the ABV on that? 6.8% alcohol by volume and 65 IBUs. Nice. Um, they basically say uh, that it's from our continual hopping method found in their 60, 90, and 120 minute uh, to our latest innovation of post-boil hop additions found in our liquid tree serum. So it seems as though this is like a big, uh, what do you call it, a dry hopped beer. But they don't want to say dry hop. They want to say we're dogfish head. We're going to throw around these big words and make it sound all unique and special. It's just dry hop dogfish head. It's cool. No big deal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't pull back my curtain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I just, just say it's dry hop, or maybe a double dry hop. Just, just get on with it. Uh, there are occasional releases. There's uh, eight of them. One is their old school barley wine. Any of you guys had that? I actually have a 2013 in my cellar. I would like to try it, but I, I haven't came across it yet. Danger cap. Danger cap. Danger has, Will Robinson. Danger. That's a danger cap, Todd. What was You'll the name like, of that one? Old school, old school barley wine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had that one. Yeah, what did you think? It's, it was pretty good. I liked it. Nice. Um, there are another uh, occasional release or rotational is their saison du buff, which uh, originally when they were released in two thousand ten, it's a collab between them, Stone Brewing Company, and Victory Brewing Company. And then I believe they just made it a beer that they typically release every year or two. Um, I believe. They switch though between the breweries. Like it says right on here, it says Dogfish Head released it in 2014, Victory released it in 2015, Stone in 2016, and it comes back to Dogfish Head. So they just rotate the release from whatever brewery. So I, I think that's pretty cool. You do a collab, and then each year, uh, one of the three breweries is releasing it again. So I didn't realize that. Pretty cool. The more you know. Uh, they're 120 minute. Is another one they release every year. It's a you know they usually release it in uh, two different time periods. They release 120 in April, May, and then in November and December. So if you miss out on one time it shows up, probably find it another time. Yeah. Did they mention their April hop? Um, that that I from what I recall uh, has been uh, retired or, or, or that was a good one they did. It was the April yep. IPA. That was their spring release, yeah, Apric Apricot IPA. Uh, their Festina Peche, which is their one of the first, at least in my experience, one of the first um, Berliner Weisses that an American brewery released on like a, a like a seasonal basis or a ro rotating basis. I remember seeing this back on the shelf in like 2010-11 when you, there was no goes as a Berliner Weisses because they didn't become popular until like three, four years ago. Um, but that's just a Berliner Weiss brewed with peaches. Um, Here's a beer that I was I was personally disappointed uh, with. I, I'm sure a couple of you guys have at least tried it, but it came out this year. It was their Lupu Luau, which was their coconut uh, pineapple, I believe, IPA. Or, or no, it was, it was coconut. It was toasted coconut, coconut water, and then experimental hops that were supposed to be coconut forward. It was I, a good I, IPA. I had that one. Oh, yeah, it was a good IPA, but it was totally lacking on the coconut, believe it or not. But again... <laughs> I like my coconut. Oh, Lupa Luau IPA. Oh, yep. Yeah. Eric probably ran out and bought a case of that. I'm pretty sure he smashed every single bottle that he ever saw. <laughs> and then drain poured them all. Yeah, he drain poured and smashed <laughs> the bottles. <laughs> Don't ever bring this beer back into my bulk, my bottle shop. <laughs> I don't like coconut. Yeah, uh, it it was like I said, it was a good IPA, but as far as coconut, I wanted. When, like, if you're gonna put coconut water, toasted coconut. And then hops that are supposed to produce co coconut flavor into your beer probably should have a pretty huge helping of coconut. But you're a coconut fiend, though. Too. I am. So that's on me, probably mostly. <laughs> <laughs> mostly not me. Uh, there are other occasional release, which is funny because I don't. Uh, again, this is this is the two, 2017 schedule. So it, it make, we're talking about Apra Hop, and uh, the regular Worldwide Stout isn't on here because they're not releasing it this year. They might bring it back. You never know. Dogfish Head does that. So instead of that, they have what Todd's drinking tonight, which is the Oak Age Vanilla Worldwide Stout, which is basically just a variant of the base Worldwide Stout. Um, they age it in oak barrels on vanilla beans. With lower alcohol content, believe it or not. 
Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, they they say it now. See, worldwide get, used to get the fifteen to twenty percent label. Right. This one get, this one gets sixteen to seventeen point five. So they've they've kind of you know dialed it in a little bit where they can tell you within like two percent now. They just don't guess. Whereas like you know fifteen <laughs> yeah, to twenty. Baby. Is yeah, it's a pretty big discrepancy. It's like I could be fifteen, could be twenty. Who knows? Think about it. You're drinking a five percent beer or a ten percent beer. Huge difference, you know. So it's kind of funny that they 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 don't have to put the actual ABV on there, just like a range. Are they still doing a Miles Davis bitches brew? Because that actually nope. what? No, no, nope. well, not not for this year that I see. Again, this is their this is their release calendar. It, it could be wrong, but I'd imagine if they put it on there as a 2017 release calendar, they at least know what they're doing. I think. I hope. Please, please be right. That, like that, that's a good one though. I, yeah, I was gonna bust that open today, but I didn't want to get absolutely schnackered because it's a 750. And it's like 10, 11 percent, but I have to drink man it. Up, Joe, man up, Joe. Man up. Not just because you're drinking 60 percent awesomeness. <laughs> that's a that's a 12 ounce bottle. <laughs> now I need to bust it out because I had it back when it first came out, and it was it was a damn good beer. But uh, I'll be curious to see what you know five years has done to it. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the Pennsylvania tuxedo next week because I got in the fridge. And guess what? Sagway, one of the last two uh, occasional releases, the Pennsylvania tuxedo. <laughs> and it's, uh, they're pale ale brewed with Pennsylvania spruce tips. Uh, but it's an, it's an imperial. I love how they say this is, a, this is a great thing. They call it a pale ale. ABV, 8.5%. Totally not a pale ale. The imperial pale ale at that point. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. It's a pal out. It's eight and a half percent pal out, okay? <laughs> Freaking dogfish head. You. They're going to let it slide, just like Brew Association. And here's the one to keep your eye out on. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Uh, they have a beer called Puddin Wine. Uh, it's an English style barley wine that they did a collaboration with da, 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 Beer Advocate. Of all people, when you said put it, I just thought like Bill Cosby or something. Bill yeah, Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah but, but a lot of, a lot of inappropriate comments could be had now. It could be. It's not uh, so, <laughs> like so pudding. <laughs> oh. Not sure I can segue from this. I don't know. If <laughs> Man, this one just jumped off the rails. Yeah, this this one. Was I got Joe so flustered on that one. Yeah. No, it's great. I love it. I just. Yeah, that was pretty good, by the way, Rod. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> so, uh, so, so they call they say it's a uniquely odd yet semi-traditional pudding wine is a collaboration between our, and I quote, brothers from another mother, Todd and Jason Alstrom of Beer Advocate. They said looking to Jason's legendary Christmas pudding recipe as inspiration. Apparently, Jason has a legendary pudding recipe. A Christmas pudding recipe <laughs> said this. Now, now, this is where I think I might want to try it. Not to support Beer Advocate, but because this sounds pretty cool. Uh, this English style barley wine delivers an infusion of flavors through the addition of sultanas, cherries, black currants, plums, dark brown sugar, and hazelnuts. That's a lot of ingredients. A lot of stuff going on right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, they they then brew it with a blend of Maris Otter, Pills, and Dark Crystal malts, and they alongside with a bit of toasted wheat, and then they put it in port barrels for a full six months. Uh, so they say they, they say the result is a full body beer brimming with notes of dark pit fruit, smooth caramel toffee. That actually sounds something like I'd love to try. Port barrels, like six different crazy fruits and sugary confectionery greatness, and then an English style barley wine. Yeah, I'm gonna grab that if I see that. I don't know about you guys. Well, did you do the uh, beer for breakfast this year? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yes, it did. That That had scrapple in it. Yeah, it did. Yes, it did. Which I thought was cool. It was interesting, but I don't usually like scrapple. But Uh, I I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think you got it too much in in the taste. It was just a little bit. Um, and and they had they they had like other things like brown sugar and other maple syrup and something else in there and if people are watching to wonder what scrapple is it is just like it sounds the scraps yeah it's just... <laughs> the scraps of the port <laughs> which is like in the northeast a popular meat they put with their eggs and stuff like that and everything that 
you have bacon, you have sausage, you have scrap. Yep. yep. Yeah, I'd highly recommend if people don't know what it is to Google it and check it out and then uh, be like, I don't want to eat that, but you totally want to. <laughs> want to give it a little try. red hot on. I put that shit on everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so now that we're done with the beers and the history and the broken website and everything, <laughs> we'll get into our personal thoughts here on Dogfish Head as as – for each of us, as when it comes to favorite beers, least favorite beers, you know, personal experience. We'll start with Eric. Eric, what was your first experience with Dogfish Head? Do you remember the first beer you had from them? Oh God, you got, had to ask that question, didn't you? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Um, I would have to look back through my videos to see which one was my first Dogfish Head. I think it actually was the the base beer, the worldwide style base beer. Started out with that. Wow, well, that's not bad. Jesus, <laughs> It's a small well, thing to start out with. I had been like going like four to five months into my beer channel, and then I had that, which I didn't do a review of. Me and my buddy came over because it was like I read it and I'm like, holy shit, this is like 15 to 20 percent. What the hell kind of thing is this? So we both poured it in glasses and we had it and said, <laughs> huge booziness, I'll tell you that. It was big, big booziness. Kind of turned me off a little bit, but then I had their. Uh, they're red and white. I think there's a red and white style of beer from Dogfish Head. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there is. Yep. I, I like that one quite a bit. And then there was the 60 minute I liked. I had the 90 minute and I liked that. And I like these two here. I mean, Dogfish Head makes solid beers. I mean, a lot like Bells that we did and a couple of the other ones that we've done. I can't remember what they were right off the top of my head. But they're a solid brewery. And if you guys see them on tap, Get one because you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you get. I mean, they're solid brewery. I think Dogfish Head is probably a, a tick or two or three above the beers that we've or, or the breweries that we've already been to, been through. That's again just, just my own personal opinion. Shots but, fired. Pardon me. Shot shots fired. Yeah, shots fired. Yeah, but I, I mean they they are they're they're good. And if you find something on tap from Dogfish Head, if you get it, you'll probably like it and probably like it a lot. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree. Uh, how about you, Rod? First experience. What beer did you have for the first time? If you can remember, I don't. I'm sorry, Eric. I didn't. <laughs> no, that's right. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just I, I when I think about first experience, obviously, it's like the first time you tried the beer, and if you remember what you had for the first time, you obviously <laughs> went balls deep with uh, worldwide style. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> that was the base beer. That was the base I beer. I had first. Well, actually, the first one I actually had with them, which was actually before I was on Untap doing stuff. Was the 120? Oh, gee, you, that's just danger capping the so first had, time ever. <laughs> we actually had a company function, and they had 120 on tap. I didn't know I ordered 120 to get sniffer glass. And very good. And little did I know, like when you try to buy this, ten dollars a bottle for a yeah. <laughs> it's expensive. But it was Definitely. very smooth, very relaxing. You didn't realize you were drinking that much ABV in it. You didn't. You know, you didn't get the alcohol, you get the booziness from it. So that was the first time I actually had tried something with them. But like Eric said, they're pretty solid as far as a brewery. Although, like right now, I'm drinking a Sequentale. As far as like gozes or sours this year, I think that's one of my favorite ones I've had. It's got a nice refreshing quality to it. Delivers very well. Has all this stuff you would want to have in a beer. You're not allowed to rush through it. You know, long you can sit there and enjoy it, and you're still getting all the duration of the flavors kicking around nicely. Earlier this year, I liked that beer for breakfast. I thought that was pretty good, you know, as far as the stouts go. Um, I still got to try the Worldwide Stout. Last year, the uh, Beer to Drink Music too. I like that version because I'm a Belgian guy up for the first type of style I usually like. And that one actually did very well for what they did. But uh, you get a wide variety of different stuff they try to put out there. So... I think they're kind of um, they're one of the the top tier kind of craft breweries out there. Um, are they Division One or are they One Double A? They're right there. I mean, they're kind of like they just cross, they're like they, they just cross over for into like the the big range. I think when you look at like the like division like the top, you know, you got stuff like Stone and you've got like Great Lakes and you've got. Um, uh, Nevada. Hand, left hand. You've got all these other ones that are doing some great stuff that have done it on different things. But 
I think they carry a big line of different beers that they're kind of sometimes they don't always hit on all of them, but they got enough that actually sustain. So I think they're like one of the, the top one level, like top level type beers as well. And, and I, I go even slightly further and say it's like they're we're like one of the first like very popular East Coast yeah. breweries that like you know wasn't Boston Beer Company. You know they they came to the forefront. So yeah. see what you're saying there. Good stuff, uh, Todd. First experience. You remember the beer? Please don't tell me it was a Danger Cat because uh, I'm going to feel very inadequate. <laughs> now, it looks like uh, my tech on it looks like a Papa Skull, which was a collaboration with Three Floyds, um, a Belgian Golden Strong Ale. It, and it was good, and, and closely followed by the 90 Minute IPA, which is one of their standards. Which is, okay. 90 Minute 90, 120, which you get like I said, twice a year. It's a, it's a fantastic beer. Um, Dogfish said, as, as a you know, like everybody else said, I mean, they're they're strong, you know, they're solid. Everything they make is pretty good, and they do have some misses, but that's also kind of their forte. Is they like to push the envelope a little bit, kind of funky that nobody else is doing, and they kind of fall in their own things, you know, because they are adding types of flavors to beers. So not everything's not up everybody's alley, but for the most part, you know, I see a dogfish head, I, it's like, yeah, hey, I'm not tried that. I wanna, I wanna try it. You know, because you're, gonna, you're gonna get something that you probably never had before, for the most part. And and it, they are good. Yeah, I, I like them. They're they're solid. Even their base stuff, if you want to say base stuff, is their IPA series is, is great. Yeah, for sure. I I totally agree. Uh, it wouldn't be a beer flow show if uh todd didn't mention three floyds at some point so if we can mark that in what is that an hour hour and 15 minutes into the show it's three floyds. it's not done on purpose i promise you no it's not but i mean it's just it's gonna happen we just we have to three floyds is like three floyds is like the trillion of the mid of the midwest so yeah, it's like <laughs> at some point at some point todd just works it in unintentionally but it happens <laughs> but next to the night might be I can't blame him. totally intentional okay. yeah he was, like, he was he was like, hey, I had this uh, collab with three Floyds. Like, yeah, it's the first beer I had. Uh, oh, what man. you're saying, Joe, is you don't want me to send you any zombie dust. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. I can't. <laughs> I don't want any of it. It's it's not good. It's, 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 it's too good. It's too good for me. Okay, way too good for me personally because I'm I'm a terrible person. Um, no, I, I agree with you guys. Uh, um, it's an it's an awesome brewery. My first experience with with them is I actually didn't go like with a single beer. I remember. Picking their stuff up for the first time, it was sixty minute, Apra Hop, and uh, what the hell else? Um, Indian uh, Brown that uh, mm. Eric had, and I remember loving the Indian Brown. To me, even back then when I wasn't huge into hop forward beers, it tasted like a liquefied like um, score bar or, or uh, you know some kind of toffee chocolate bar in li liquid form. It was amazing. Sixty minute was classic you know just east coast ipa that solid and to this day i when i have it is the same thing upper hop was interesting though because that back then not many places were brewing beers uh especially ipas with fruits in them so to have an ipa with an uh, you know, apricot in it was pretty cool but uh indian indian brown to this day is probably one of my favorite dogfish head beers like the base beer uh, when you're talking year round, no no specially releases or seasonals. It's just it's, it's such a well made beer. I really thoroughly enjoy it. And pumpkin, uh, uh, the pumpkin ale is another one that I experienced earlier with them, and uh, it was probably the first pumpkin beer I liked. Uh, the the only pumpkin beer I think I ever bought like a four pack of, which is I mean, yeah, pumpkin, I think it's, it's, it's one of the better pumpkin beers out there, I believe, in my yeah, opinion. I, I like that it has you know they actually has a base beer. It's a base brown ale. It's not just here's our generic pumpkin ale, whatever, just random. We can't even tell you what the base beer is. It's just what it's a pumpkin ale, which really it, pumpkin ales are a style, but it's like the there has to be some kind of base to it, and they tell you it's a brown ale. So I, I, I like that aspect from it. Um, but I, I echo everything you say. I won't bore the viewers more so than I already do. And yeah, they're a good brewery. I think the one thing that makes them unique, like like Todd was talking about, is for being such a such a big brewery. I like their don't give a crap attitude where like Sam will just brew whatever the hell he wants. If we want to do crazy ancient ales, I don't care. You know, if we sell 250,000 barrels, uh, 250,000 barrels a, uh, uh, a year, I don't care if we, um, you know, are, are so big that we're in 35, 40 States. If I want to do some weird recipe, 
I'm going to do it. The right. thing you can only say about Dogfish Head, whether you like the beer or whether you hate the beer, you're always intrigued by it. You always, you always, they always make cool things that in theory will sound cool or sound gross, but most of the time you want to try it. Like the beer for breakfast. Beer. What's kind of funny about that is that that almost kind of uh, sank their ship in, in, in a sense, um, you know, yeah. four or five years ago, but now it's kind of come full circle where that's what everybody's kind of looking forward to. And it kind of resurrected their, uh, sense you know where everybody's kind of like okay dog fish it. yeah they're weird stuff and then it's fantastic you know i i think i think they finally realized unlike a lot of breweries which you would like it's a business right so what you want to do is you always want to have stuff that is consistently around you have to have those year-round beers those core offerings but you also want to bring in new people and still be interesting, right? Right. And they just blend that together. They have a good core range. You can get their 60-minute, 90-minute. They have good seasonals. But then they also make these you know, one-off, off-the-wall crazy beers. And it isn't your local brewery that you can only get it in like this small little town and it's only brewery only and you got to wait in line. It's No, their distribution footprint's pretty big. And all of us will see like the Oak Age Vanilla World by Style. We, will, we all can buy that. Whether or not we want to pay 10 bucks for a single 12-ounce bottle is up to us. But most of their stuff shows up in all their distribution footprints. So if you're intrigued enough to try one of their off-the-wall beards, or beers, you can. And that's the cool thing, right? You don't have to really hunt them down. Um, so we kind of already talked about our feelings. I won't do the whole recap of like, oh, what do we think about it? Blah, blah, blah. We all think Dogfish Head's a damn good brewery. We all enjoy them. We all think everyone should try them. Uh, but you know, the last two things is any of you guys, because I have I have one that uh, I, I want to specify because I hate this beer. But um, any beers that you guys have had from Dogfish Head that you disliked immensely, strong word, but maybe even hate, <laughs> or maybe aren't a fan of. So, Todd, we'll, we'll start with you. Anything you can think of? You can go on tapped. If you want me to come had, back, you would come back. No, I had one. It was called Tweezin' Ale, and it was a gluten-free beer, oh. and it was the, one of the worst beers that I ever had. Yeah. It was it was not good. That's the one made <laughs> with, like, like strawberries strawberries, or some kind of berries and something, right? Like, yeah, it was gluten-free. Terrible. Wait, it was oh, awful. This, this was from was them. Just, not, was, not a collab, right? It was from them directly? Yeah, it was them. They made a gluten-free. That was the gluten-free offering they used to have. Yeah. Yeah, that, so, the, so for me, that was the worst uh, dogfish head beer I've ever had. Fair enough, good sir. <laughs> so how about you, Rod? <laughs> so, um, nothing. I don't know there's anything that really disappointed me. I know the Midas Touch was one I thought was decent enough. I gave it a three out of five, but I mean, I don't think I've rated anything lower than a three out of those for those guys. Um, no, nothing really that's uh, been uh, terrible in any way, really. Rod's just trying to keep the lines of communication open with Dogfish Head in case Sam wants to come on the show at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do it. Trying to do it. I get it. He's got a network. He can't. You know, can't. No, no, I, I, no. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the same way, but we'll, we'll go to Eric first. Uh, Eric, anything you can think of that you've had from them that you didn't like? No, no. I, I've enjoyed everything that I've liked. If, if, but if there, is, if there is one bad beer, it might be the, the, the Indian Brown oh, Dark IPA. No, I liked it. I liked it, but it really didn't give any IPA notes like your bitterness to it. It was kind of more of the brown ale coming out more than the hops. But that, that's more or less just nitpicking. Honestly, though, that's that's that was my experience as well. That's why I liked the beer. Like I said, you got a lot of co like toffee and caramel and stuff, and you just got yeah. a little like a little hop character. That's why yeah. it's weird to see them call it dark IP because it really was just like a, a slightly hoppy brown ale. So yeah, I, it's the brown ale. Yeah. It's the marketing things kind of like, eh, I don't know, they kind of jumped on it, right? The whole right, IPA. It, having the IPA on there, I would think it'd be a little bit bitter, but yeah. I really didn't get any bitterness really. Yeah, good beer, but just misrepresented yeah. for what they're saying. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. But no, I, I, more or less for Dogfish Head, uh, I, I've liked everything they've had so far. Yeah. Um, I'm I, I'm actually with you guys outside of one beer. So uh, you know, like Rod was saying, the lowest he ever rated anything on tap was three out of five. The lowest I've ever rated anything from from Dogfish Head was a three point five out of five. I thought every single one of their beers was at least a good beer, except for one, and that is uh, their Amort Al. I've this heard of that one. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. Now this was a beer that they brewed uh, with uh, peat smoked barley, juniper berries, and vanilla. 
and um, the base, and they use a blend of English and uh, Belgian style yeast. And then now, was that the version from this year, by the way, or was that previous? What, what's that? Was it from this year? No, this this I had it. Holy shit! <laughs> I had it like three or four years ago. I, okay. that, I was just, why I was just wondering if because well, I know they have one this year that came out too with that. Oh, oh, did they? Okay, they, they yeah, well, they went twenty seventeen. Okay, then, then again, it was one of those beers that wasn't on their website, like in the release calendar. So I totally believe it. I, I, I thought it was a yearly release, but I remember having it. So I've never used the tasting note medicinal too I've, often. I've used it with IPAs, yeah. yeah. A couple times. This beer, now listen, I don't just roll around, open up Band-Aids and eat them, okay? Because that's not how I roll. <laughs> but imagine yourself smelling a Band-Aid fresh out of the package Right. That's how this beer tasted from the peat and the yeast and the oak. It was like drinking a band aid. It was, it was the wor- to this day, one of the top five worst beers I've ever had. And I, you know, I, sounds I probably, like experience to me. It, it was so gross. <laughs> was it still highly, was it highly <laughs> sweet? Wait, what was that time? Some people were saying it was sweet. I said, sounds like experience to me. Oh, yeah. That's a, it was a bad experience. <laughs> Let me, let me, when we, do, when we do a beer tray, Todd, I will send you uh, an alcoholic seltzer water aged with band aids. See how you like it. No, it, it was, yes. It was, I can't wait. it was absolutely disgusting. Yeah, no, did, 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 did you know, I was looking at this year. A lot of people seem, a lot of people seem to like this year's. What I think it was is just the, the, I think the peat smoked barley. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like, you know, peated whiskeys. But I never get like super medicinal flavors. Maybe a touch. This was just over the top for me. It was just. It was honestly. I gagged a few times drinking it, and I can count on one hand the amount of beers that made me want to be physically ill as I'm drinking it. Right. And it was not a pleasant experience. But aside from that, everything else. Stuff, I mean, 20, 30 beers I've had from them. Awesome. I mean, they they do good stuff. They are very consistent in uh, what they present. And I think even if you don't like their crazy off the wall beers, I get where they're coming from. Even if I don't like the beer, like it, it's just probably flavors I don't enjoy. It's probably well made, except for the Morgan. That's a piece of junk. So yeah, um, uh, yeah. My only, uh, my only negative of the Dogfish Head is they pulled distribution in Indiana a couple of years ago. We have the pack now, but oh, and I, like, I, I remember, it, and it was, it was actually, it was, it was unfortunate for you and and your your state because obviously you have this brewery here and they pull out. But I like the, the. I remember the reason they did it was because they were spreading themselves too thin. They weren't able to get yeah. when beers were released. They couldn't get everything to their distribution footprint. So they were like, "Wait, we expanded way too quickly. Let's roll this back." Now they shouldn't have expanded in the first place. But you know, sometimes you got to correct your mistakes. So I get that, and it's glad I'm glad they actually moved back. And I think it was like three or four states they pulled out of, and yours was included. And then they came back in the last couple of years. So yeah. it was good on them. But I uh, think it was uh, it might have been last year, early last year. It might have been late 2015. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah I, I do remember when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but now they're back and everything's honky dory, peachy keen. It's all honky dory now. Yes. Yeah. Um. And and I guess last but not not least, uh, any beers you guys thinking about trying? Going forward, Rod, anything that you're you're looking for? You, I think you mentioned the Oak Age Worldwide Stout. Anything else that uh, piques your interest? Yeah, I mean, I'll try. I'll try. I want that one. I haven't tried yet, and I thought I tried the Flesh and Blood, but I, I didn't. So that's here. So I'll probably get that at some point. Um, is the Burton Baton still available? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. That might be one. You know. That is a good one. You should you should definitely try that one. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, if it's out there, I'll try it. How about you, uh, Eric? Anything you're looking forward to trying? I want to try the Sequench Ale that uh, Rod's got. I want to really try that one. You better get on it. I hear they only brew it nine months out of the year now, but it's year round. <laughs> not January, February, March. Only too long. Those three months, and like, ah, I'm not gonna brew it. Now you should be able to find it whenever. I mean, uh, that's. Because they added it to the year-round lineup, uh, and again, that th- while that style is, you know, it's basically a, like their take on a goza. It's popular. It'll still be readily available whenever oh, you want to pick it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it will be. You won't have to kill anyone to get a cat. <laughs> this, this, this is this is an old nation or anything. You know, it's not crazy. It's not <laughs> Trillium or Treehouse. How about you, Todd? Now, I don't really have anything offhand that I can think of, like specifics, but anything new that comes out, you know, something that I haven't seen before, I, I always like to try to pick up. And, uh, 
Tyson. You know, they're they're kind of one of those that can tend to lean towards uh, the heavy side of things. But I also paid eleven dollars for a twelve ounce bottle. So. Uh-huh. That's not too big of a deal. So if it's something you know something that uh, piques my interest, I definitely like to pick it up. I don't anything on fan, so no, I don't I don't have an answer for that. One. Awesome. Um. Shout out to Redbeard, Drunken One, and Teku Murray, my buddy Ewart, in the comments. I Yes, I've seen your comments, but we're, I was just trying to go through before I read the comments. But yeah, I'll read your comments in about 30 seconds, and you guys will all be super popular on Rod's channel. <laughs> <laughs> super, superstars, Redbeard. Superstars. Um, I want to try the pudding wine. I had no idea that was a thing. Uh, I don't want to support Beer Advocate, but I also want to try an August... You know, English style barley wine with a bunch of adjuncts and okay. So. I almost love Bill Cosby getting there. So yeah, no, no more. No, we're gonna go to comments here before you know Redbeard has a stroke. Um, Redbeard says, "What be going down?" Can well listen. You know, Redbeard. I saw your I saw your seventy five hour uh, drunken one <laughs> stream you guys did the other day where you were making fun of someone's grammar. I don't know with can the me join in the fun. I don't know what that means. But I'm not going to make fun of your grammar. I'm just going to say I don't I don't understand the question. And then he said a question mark showing his total Canadianness there. Um, hey. He also says Barnstormer in Barry Ontario uh, Barry, uh, Barry Ontario Canada makes an amazing mango IPA. And he said this is the most acknowledged chat ever. Redbeard, I just ignore you. That's what I do. That's like my job is to ignore you specifically. <laughs> And he says, does does anybody even have the chat window open? Totally do. But I'm not reading your comments. <laughs> he likes you have to, attention, doesn't he? Yeah, if you have to ask, <laughs> if you have to ask, I'm just ignoring it. Uh, Drunken One comes in and says, I don't think so. And then uh, Redbeard says, hey, man. So now they're going to have a seven-hour stream here just in the live chat by themselves. Um, Redbeard says, let's start our own chat, LOL. And Drunken One says, I just got here, but I'm about to head off to bed. And Redbeard said, damn it. And then Ewer comes in with, I've always been bummed out about missing out on the Pearl Jam beer that they did, which they did do, mm. had to be like three or four years ago. Ewer, if you're still watching and we don't close it down before you can answer, do you remember what year that was and what the name of the beer was? Because I, I, don't, I don't recall. I mean, I could Google it, but I'm lazy. Um, Drunken One says it was worth the wait for me to read the comments. Ideal. And uh <laughs> Ewart says, read my comments, right meow. Shout out to Super Troopers. Right meow. <laughs> right meow. Right meow. Right meow. <laughs> Redbeard says, Super Troopers 2 is on the way. They finished shooting on it a few months ago. Yep. Redbeard goes, I just want to join in, LOL. And this is well played. I love you too, Joe. Who said I loved you, though? Wait, he didn't actually say I too. He, loves you, I love you, he you. just said I love you, Joe. So he didn't say okay. too. But uh, Redbeard. I respect your beard. I do. It's a great beard. <laughs> Some beard love going on here, or what? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I was, there's, a beard, there's a mutual respect between the beards. So. A bromance is for me. <laughs> but uh, no, even though I'm joking, I appreciate, appreciate the comments. Uh, I, I do think when we get into the chat here uh, next next week or next time we do it, I don't know if next week I'll do a better job of trying to in between each one to answer. I just we get kind of caught up in talking about the brewery, especially when we go to our own experiences that I'm just, you know, we're all talking about. It, so I, I don't think to be like, oh, you know, what's somebody specific thing? But we'll do that next week. Redbeard, I appreciate the shout out. Don't ever fucking do it again. All right. <laughs> and that's, that, that was a little Major League. I don't know if you guys remember Major League, uh, the movie. Oh, yeah. When, uh, yeah. when uh, Willie Mays Hayes hits the home run. And he comes back to the to the uh, dugout, and he's like, "Nice hit, Mace. Don't ever fucking do it again." Do it again. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> yeah. All kinds of movies. You might run like Maze, but you hit like shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Redbeard says he doesn't need the love back, and then Ewart trolls me and says, "You are the worst, Joe." I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ewart. But at least I tried the Pearl Jam beer. Joe needs to stick to grooming. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you you want to come in? I'll groom you someday. <laughs> As a whole, it's a whole other show, show, right? It's a whole other show. Yep. Uh, so that does it for Dogfish. And I mean, it's uh, one of those one of those breweries that I'm glad we did because it's like we've done a lot of big ones. Uh, so be more big ones we do over the course of doing this, but I'm glad we got them kind of out of the way early because I, I do think they're 
they're one of the breweries that uh, we've all had good experiences with, and I think they even to this day continue to do interesting things. And I'll every year I'll pick up some of their new stuff because it's yeah. it's worth trying at the very least. Would you almost say if they are they on the elite level? Are they an elite brewery? They're elite of I would say they're elite of the more well known, uh, readily available, easier to get, high distribution um breweries yeah, like you're yeah. like like rod was talking about your stones your sierra nevadas uh right you know, dogfish yeah. had kind of fits them all i mean i i they they are like i said they're consistent in their year-round stuff but they're also making treating beers so mm-hmm. i mean are they better than like a stone like beer for beer i don't know i guess it all depends on what you like where stones mostly hop forward crazy you know like crazy hop forward stuff and i think dogfish head if you're somebody who likes trying different beers and is always just I don't know, happy to try something that sounds unique. That's out of the box. Yeah. Just like, Hey, I want, I want something. I just want something weird today. You can go find it with them where I don't think, you know, the rest of the big breweries, I I would say dogfish had innovates, maybe not as much anymore because there's so many breweries now and everybody's doing crazy stuff. But I I, dogfish had is one of the big breweries that has innovated for a long time. And I don't think all the other breweries in that, you know, upper echelon elite big brewery level, does it as well them as well as them to this day that they be mine. I would agree I would agree with that mm-hmm. cool well that's a pretty good segment on dogfish head so anybody else got any finishing thoughts here no no if you guys uh, see it in a brew pub or if you guys see it in a out of the restaurant pick it up yeah yeah uh, you were you were um just want to throw this out here. I did not see he said why why don't you read my Alstrom comments and I don't see anything about the Alstrom brothers on here. Uh you have that. Read my comments, something about the Pearl Jam beer, about you didn't get a chance to try it. I see nothing. I'm sure it's something very negative about the Alstrom brothers. I know that much. <laughs> but I but I, I seriously do not see it. <laughs> he, and he also continues with dogfish is innovative and creative. Stone is extreme and aggressive. It's a better way to put it. That's that's a good analogy there, or a good uh, yeah. explanation. You I guess. said in two sentences what I took fucking three minutes to say, but good job, you were showing me. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so I think, and I think we're done. Yeah. yeah, I think we're done on that. So before we close out, so I think we're like maybe if it's not this week, it's the next week of the first NCAA playoff rankings. For football, oh, for the uh, BCS, yeah, yeah, next week. I think it's next week. So, if you had four breweries, who would be your top four right now? Mm-hmm. Like, who would be your Alabama? Who would be your Ohio? Ooh. State? Ooh. I think that's way too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a week. Give us a week, and we'll come back next week and say. Come. You, know, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna like throw like thirty-two names in a in like in a in a hat and let us pick from that, because I mean, you're talking six thousand breweries, and there's so many of them now. Yeah, but, so many good. Yeah, but it's you're looking at the major powerhouses as far as like. It, it really has to come down to what you can get distribution, though. Really. Yeah, but there's only there's like there's there's only some that cross the like you're looking at your stones, you're looking at your Sierra Nevadas, your Southern Tiers, your Great like you're looking at ones that cross a lot of the state lines to be even eligible. I think your Dogfish Head is one of the heavy hitters. It would be a top five. If yeah, if you're, just if you're talking about gets decent distribution, like you know, at least like twenty plus states, decent distribution and decent tasting beers. But I because think you're looking at like, like if you were doing your top four, you like say, well, here's your Alabama that's number one, right? It's hard to say that that would not be like a stone or something in that regard. Well, I don't know. I don't you know, know if it would or not. I mean, they're everywhere. They crush everywhere. They make a lot of. Different would you put them over some of your locals though? Well, locally, I mean, everybody else can get division two, your division three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, no, no, that's that's right. like 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 you're. That's a different topic there, though. That's that's different. That's yeah. a whole different like you're, genre. You got there. great locals here. I mean, Ryan Geis was number two in the country for best new upstart in the three years, but I wouldn't put him up against a stoner because they're not really there yet. I don't think. No, but I mean, if, for beer for beer, you could probably. Yeah, in your opinion, yeah. in your opinion, you could put them up against that because you get the. I mean, we get them here also, but a lot of people in the country don't know who Ryan Geist is, which is a shame. 
Right. Yeah. Which is, you could say for, you know, 90% of the breweries, they're just not the big name that's out there. But there's so many people doing so many good things that, you know, it's just it's so yeah. individual yeah. for what everybody can get in their area. That, that's that's the thing it's like I, I think if you if you had to do something like that you'd have to just keep it to bigger breweries that have a vast distribution if you start taking into account everybody has local breweries that are awesome so it'd be like yeah it would be a shit show to try to do that I, <laughs> but if you kept it to like you know a, a certain amount of you throwing bells into shoots and stone and uh you know dogfish head and bell uh trying to think of other other ones um like the qual or yeah would you consider the founder still you you would have to throw boston beer company sierra nevada in there even though you probably new belgium like yeah their, their craft yeah. Brews that have bigger, you and tall yeah yeah you, i mean there's a lot it'd be interesting to see it really would maybe right, so the uh, question, question is throw, been, the the throw, been thrown out there what you're all stopping for would you say, Todd? I said, since the question was thrown out, what is your all's top four on, on the big distro? Um... Stone, Dogfish Head, New Belgium, and I personally like Founders. But technically, Founders will be a craft beer now. All right, settle, settle down, Rob. <laughs> See, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is, I know someone, there is, someone will say that out there. Belgium. Yeah. New Holland and all of them. Yeah. That's the problem I have. It's only 30%, though. It's only 30%. Wow. Yeah. It's only 30. It's still 70 still owned by the craft guys. That's what I don't understand. Is like, how do you draw the line here when it's only 30%? Owned? Yeah, yeah. Like, for me, I would have, like, I'd probably have Stone in there. I think they're a powerhouse. I think Sierra Nevada. Yeah. I think. Oscar Blues is another one that I was just thinking of, too. Oh, yeah. That I, I, really... I think Southern Tier. The shoots is actually really good, very, very good. And then the shoots would be another one that's up there too. Yeah, like I said, you have, you, yeah, that's a, you have that's a tough, uh, that's a tough one to really pinpoint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rogue. I but I'll, I I don't like Rogue, but I give it crowd them credit. They're everywhere, and people buy their stuff. So Rogue would be up there. I've never had a Rogue beer ever. Just keep it that way. <laughs> really. Rogue, like Rogue, Rogue for me is like an Oklahoma State. You don't know what team's going to show up. A Avery? Avery's another good one. I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Rogue is very hit and miss. Yeah. More more misses than hits and very expensive. It's, it, <laughs> a Lagunitas. A Lagunita is how we forget Lagunitas. Lagunitas is up there. Lagunitas is top, definitely top four. Lagunitas is oh, like a yeah. You can't count them oh, either. Not price alone is Lagunitas. Heineken, Heineken can own 7 billion percent of them. They're still in my top four. <laughs> oh, they're great. That's what I'm saying. It's like, well, where they're do you draw the line? Beer. They reach out all breweries. What do you do? Like a Ballast Point. I don't. I mean, Ballast Point is good. Uh, speaking of like, like is, hey Rod, did you say you got the sake beer that they have? Yeah, sake to me. I haven't drank it yet, but it's in the basement. I've got it too. So you should let me know. Maybe we can do a uh, collab. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, baby, do a review with baby. Duff the real so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nice, nice, nice big fat bottle of socket to me. Yeah, I got one. I got one also. I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we we have a few more uh, comments to read. If you if, if uh, I guess I'll read. That's you, dog. You you got the control board. Yeah, I'm kind of. <laughs> um, Redbeard says, and he continues. Is this going on for a bit still? Question mark. Because I would really like to join him if possible. Miley face, and then he says. I assume that's a no. Freaking <laughs> Joe sticking his tongue out at me. Here's the thing, Red Beer. I don't know what channel we're on, but it seems like it's Rod J Beer Ventures channel YouTube. <laughs> I have no power <laughs> in who comes in or out. And Rod is the guy you dictate the question to. And we are obviously finishing up here. So, I mean, I we're not going to be online for much longer, but. I don't hold any power in my hands. Um, and then Craig from Kent Beer Review says Dogfish had done Dogfish had done a collaboration with Wells and Young. Uh, Wells and Young's three years ago called DNA. Wells of Young. Wells and Young's obviously double chocolate stout mm -hmm. and uh, the banana bread beard and double no breakfast action beer or dessert action beer. Mm -hmm. Or you uh, can have dessert for breakfast. Up to you. 
Yep. Redbeard also said Rogue question mark. I don't know if he meant as like Rogue should be in one of those conversations or he's questioning whether Rogue would be included. And then uh, Craig also said Al Smith. Al Smith's another one, but I don't know how f- where the distribution gets yeah. cut off. I know we get them in New York. I don't I know. Get some here. We get them here. So. We do not get them here. You don't get Al Smith, Todd? No. Bama's point would be like Notre Dame. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're giving Bell's point a little bit too much credit. How do you leave us out? You didn't want to be with everybody. <laughs> maybe maybe a USC. Maybe start cr- creating beers outside of variants of Sculpin and your victory at sea because that's that's like, like all that's you do right now. That's Notre Dame right there. <laughs> yeah. You you are being the awesome viewer that he is. He says uh, he is also desperate to join. But not really. My hate for Joe knows no bl- uh, blunts. He blunts. I don't know what that means. He corrects himself and says no bounds. I get it. I get it. G- good job. <laughs> it was a great insult if you did it correct the first time, maybe. But you failed. You were. It's okay. That's what you are in life. Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, that, that's it. That's uh, Redbeard. Also says, "Damn you so very much." <laughs> I don't know why you're damning me, bro. Like I don't. <laughs> I'm a part. Is it Sweetwater Brewing? Nope. No. There we go. You get them, Todd? Sweetwater? Uh, Sweetwater? Is that what you said? Yeah, out of Atlanta. No, I don't get there. They don't distribute up here. Uh, they're not in Indiana, but in they're Michigan, in Louisville. They don't. Yeah, so they're like a, they're like a Division One Double A. Yeah, we don't get them in Indiana, but I can go across the bridge and get them in Louisville. So, like an yeah. Appalachian state. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we should start coming up with similarities between some of these beers and teams. Who they actually are. Of course, we'll have basketball season starting up here like in a week or so. Any terrible uh, beer is the Detroit Lions. Right, Ooh, Detroit Lions. Who's the Detroit Lions? Aren't the Lions doing good this year? Well, we're 3-3 three and three right now, but we play Pittsburgh this week. So that's like Rogue 500. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know you. You're on a downward trend, Rod. We're on a downward trend. <laughs> Some would say Rogue may be a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> has has have they ever hit zero and sixteen? Is the question? Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that. Oh, no, you're you're just Rogue saying that. Lost. No, I'm saying Rogue. Has Rogue ever hit zero and sixteen? Oh no, no. What's the equivalent no. of hitting zero and sixteen? Who's your all right? Who's your zero and sixteen beer? Who? And does it have to be crap? Well, if if be Dan it? was here, he would say Menhouse, but he's not here. Oh, yeah. Min- Minhaus is uh, known for, <laughs> how do you say, shit beer beyond belief. Like, they are. What they produce is just garbage. Absolute garbage. Is there a brewery that's always been, like, kind of a miss? I don't know. I don't think there has been. Anybody in the comments? You know, the guys that I have insulted for the last 20 minutes? You guys want to <laughs> chime in? I mean, you, Zima would be like an 016, but that's not beer. No. <laughs> it's a and they do have the, they do have that lion's color a little bit with that blue. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah, they got that blue and the white and a little bit of that black in right. there. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one you always say, camo? Maybe they're the 016? No, uh, it's... Yeah, no, not not your shirt, just like the camo ice or whatever. Yeah, 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 <laughs> camo beer, isn't that a malt liquor? Yeah. Like a malt beverage. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We, I, I, you'd have to spend some time to like really think about comparison to teams or comparison to records or whatever. Because I can't off the top of my head think of an Owen sixteen actual craft beer company. Like I mean, maybe there's Daddy, some bad ones. Daddy, Daddy. I mean, it's decided oh. for a bit, but always ends up flat. Owen 16. I just think beer. What are you talking about? Sorry, sorry, Eric. Every macro beer is Owen 16. All of them. Maybe Owen 17. You you, you could make a you could make a case for um uh Paps or Schlitz. Yeah, but Paps can be all right on a good day. Better than some of the other ones, I think. Rod, Rod, do you see what you did? You have devolved this channel and this specific video into talking about macro beers and malt liquor. I thought it was Eric's well, fault. I shouldn't say devolve. Eric I should say you evolved. <laughs> yeah. We have, we have grown leaps and bounds in the last three minutes, actually. Maybe Coors Light would be – maybe Coors Light be dealt with 16. Because, I mean, you are drinking water pretty much every time. Yeah, anything that but tastes like so water. It's smooth, man. It's smooth. It's wild, <laughs> like, yeah. Like the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> ocean water? Are you the president? That would add some flavor. <laughs> it's like beer is 90%. Coors Light is... Well, the guys at Dogfish Head are going to watch this and be like, why in the hell are they talking about paps and Coors? Yeah, someone from Dogfish Head watches this, thank you, but also this is entirely on Rod. All Rod. This is Rod. Anything that's happening here is Rod's fault. But everybody's like, hey, yeah, keep hitting our competitors like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we ran a gamut on stuff there for tonight. So, I believe so. Probably the next one in a couple weeks because next Thursday I'm getting my root canal finally done. So, you know, you know, what makes the root canal feel better? Drinking copious amounts of awesome beer, but not really. Lots of beer. Lots and lots of beer. Follow with the bike. Follow with the Viking in. Uh, not recommended. <laughs> but uh, you know, not gonna reach his own. Go nighty night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you do you. Do you. You do you. <laughs> have you guys had a root canal before? Yeah, I have. No. How was it afterwards? Like, uh, well, they, they know what came me up. I was feeling good, dude. I, <laughs> I, it was the biggest overhyped to me, overhyped in terms of pain that anyone's at. Like, everyone's like, "Oh, it's terrible." It wasn't. I didn't even. I, I, took, I took. I took one Vicodin one afterwards. I just actually took those big uh, ibuprofen pills, like the eight hundred milligrams. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't too bad. I popped a beer. Not everybody's Yo, tough like Joe, though. No, I no seriously. Like the pain tolerance, the, the tea <laughs> stuff. Like I had all my wisdom ripped out. I wasn't put to sleep or anything. They just little Novocaine ripped out, ripped out all my wisdom teeth. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's gonna be terrible." My like my you know everything was swollen. Up. It wasn't bad at all. Like people are like, "Oh, it's, it hurts." It's like I guess if you like put band aids on your cuts because you can't handle. It. I don't like. I don't understand. Whatever. <laughs> what, 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 when it comes, when it comes, to the canal, like I got it done. I went back. I got the jackhammer. I went back to work. Yeah. The worst part about the root canal for me was the fact that they, uh, they went in there and uh, you could, as it was, ha you could like I want to say taste like the, the taste the, burn. the burning, taste like burning. Yeah, you could feel it and like taste a little bit. Outside of that, it, not a big deal for me. Everybody's different. I mean, it could uh, again, it, whatever tooth you're having it on could be way more sensitive. It could be even worse off or whatever. But I mean. I didn't experience that much. And like Eric said, he was Novocaine up. I'm sure he didn't really yeah. feel it too much either. It's after about a day, every, the next day, you should be, you know, drinking a six pack. I actually, I don't know. Yeah. Or yeah. the very longest, a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a couple a day or two. You're, you're, you're back on your feet. Not that yeah, you're off. They, you, they said I shouldn't feel too much, but you know, no, I've seen some stuff a lot of people been drinking, drinking beer that day. So yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it, they tell you not to drink it. You're doing painkillers, but well, yeah, it's the painkillers. It's it's not like that that alcohol. If anything, that alcohol is probably gonna you know to help the <laughs> <laughs> it'll help it out. But like as far as but but <laughs> alcohol does like thin out the blood. So like if if you do have any bleeding or whatever, and you were to like go home and then with the next couple hours start drinking alcohol, you might have a little bit of an issue with the bleeding as well. But yeah, uh, <laughs> you should you should be fine, Rod. You are. You are a tough man. Oh, I'm not worried about it. I was just wondering how you guys just handled where you went. Uh, they know what came me up. I was good to go. Yeah. One of the guys I worked with, he said it was no big deal for him. He was back to work, no. actually, with the hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not – it's – Even after the Novocaine wears off, you're fine. Yeah. There, yeah. There's different so levels of really pain tolerance. Pain yeah, there's different yeah, levels of pain tolerance, too. Like – everybody's different so it's like some people can't handle it all like a little bit of sensitivity to pain and they're just done and other people are like whatever like i broke my leg and it was fantastic i had a great time it's like huh yeah. I mean, <laughs> leg was broken you didn't you have a cast yeah, whatever it's great all right you had a compound fracture your yeah. bone was sticking out it was bald my ball the bone was sticking through my skin yeah, high five. It's like, <laughs> like that scene in Fast and Furious, what, number eight or whatever, like The Rock, he has a cast on. Yeah. He's got to go to work and he breaks the cast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple more comments before we do cut it, but uh, Ewart says, go Lions, yes, question mark. He is a Lions fan. Yeah, he, does, go Lions! he lives in Windsor, Ontario. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, probably about an hour and a half away from you or so. Um, he said Stone is zero and seventeen, worse than the Browns. <laughs> oh wow! He, oh, like, he wow. likes. He doesn't really believe that. He actually, no, he actually, he. Uh, you, you're not a huge, huge fan of uh, Greg Cook, the owner, like how eccentric yeah. and kind of over the top he is. So he always, he always trolls them. Uh, and then Drunken One is back and said he had three teeth pulled a couple weeks ago, which uh, we all saw. I'm pretty sure, and uh, they were all molars, and he got the stitches pulled yesterday. 
and uh, he said, "Get your meds soon after leaving." Yeah, <laughs> and that's his advice. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't see a drunken one had those pulled. I didn't realize that. I know he was offline for a bit, but oh. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't see the video where. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Good. He's back up and running. Nope. Well, he's back up and running a couple of days. He, I mean, on the weekend, he had that red beard and him uh, seven oh, hours. I was there had left before red beard showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah drinking, yeah. drinking screwdrivers, going nuts. Fantastic. Yeah, he's he definitely had the screwdriver more of the screw than a driver in his class. <laughs> Correct him. <on> that. <laughs> He's a friend of vodka, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's a friend of alcohol. He would probably I don't even have to ask Jerkin one this question, but he would drink the shit out of those alcoholic uh seltzer waters. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Broken one be like, are you screwing me right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why the hell would I want seltzer water with alcohol? I don't think drunk one has ever asked a question about why is there alcohol in this. He just drinks it. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? His his uh, his uh, YouTube username is not clever. It's the truth. <laughs> he, that's what he told me anyway. Like, yeah. Well, he goes on. He goes on Joe D's show once in a while. Joe feels bad calling him drunk. He's like, I want to call anybody a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, lo- we love you, John. Come on. We love you. He said thanks, guys, I guess. <laughs> by, the, by the way, Drunken One, now that you're sober, I would think, uh, I don't ever want to see you angry like you were the other day in the Redbeard hangout. You were that – I don't – Drunken Drunken One angry? That's just my, – my brain cannot handle that, like, at all. Like, you being angry at any point in time is like, nope. Never seen you angry? I never want to see you angry again. Yeah. It's like water and oil. Yeah, definitely. They do not mix. He's like he's getting all flustered and screaming and stuff. Like holy crap! <laughs> like, just get yourself another screwdriver and settle down. Hold on, man. Sit me down. Now Sit hold me down. on, drunken one. Now hold on. <laughs> Shout out to Lance too. <laughs> oh, with that, I guess we've been on for a bit here, so almost two hours, and uh, drunken one still holds the title at seven plus. I think Peter, I think the most yeah. Peter was always like six something. So Drunken one actually had an eight hour one that uh, he had to restart uh, a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago where he had to actually restart it because it ended after eight hours and he had to restart the broadcast and kept on going. Wow. Man, he's yeah. had a little Jerry Lewis telethon. Drunken <laughs> one <laughs> Drunken one is a uh is a true You'd like to make a donation? Yes, I have it. Make some more. <laughs> you're, gonna have, you're gonna have jugglers on this show and magicians for soon. <laughs> can't you uh can't you do the, the, the money thing on uh YouTube where you're in the comments you can like give PayPal or money right to right to like the people that are live streaming? I thought they had that, I forgot what it's called. I think you're talking about one of your sex sites, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a YouTube channel near you. Yeah. <laughs> ching, 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 ching. I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have, no, have nothing for that. I mean, if anything, that's a perfect segue into a PSA that I know. Yeah. Before we, <laughs> before we head out, Eric with the PSA. Hang on. So it's called Super Chat. I'm not an idiot, but I am. But it's called Super Chat. You can pay people that are live streaming on YouTube. All right. Continue. <laughs> All right, guys. Before I get into my PSA, guys, if you guys want to see more beer reviews, come over to my other channel. It's called Eric's Beer Reviews, E R I C apostrophe S Beer Reviews. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll do beer reviews, and I'll just keep it to the beer reviews so I don't mix in the sports. But Eric the Lions, Eric a Lions fan, excuse me, will still be there doing the Detroit sports and Michigan and Michigan State sports. So go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button over to Eric's Beer Reviews. And as always, if you've had too much to drink, please get a designated driver. Guys, in this day and age, it's stupid to do it now because you're going to get pulled over. You're going to do the stupid sobriety test. Then you're going to get thrown in the back of a cop car. Then you're going to have jail time, court fees, and then some possible prison time. And if you're here to kill somebody, you're definitely going to prison for a while. And if you kill yourself, all you've done is hurt your family and friends and put yourself six feet under, okay? Let's sleep off your buzz like Rod. <laughs> and... <laughs> and uh, Get your car, you know, call a buddy, Uber, taxi, Lyft, somebody, just so we're, you can come back the next day and watch all of us do this next week, okay? Just sleep off your bus, get your car the next day. Don't come back and watch us. You don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if, if, you, if you do what you're supposed to do and not drink and drive, fine, fine. 
better entertainment. There has to be. There has to be better <laughs> entertainment out there. Well, we may force people to drink by them that's, watching. That's us. true. I was say, Mike, <laughs> Mike force you to drink and drive if you watch yes. us. If you come here, we will make you drink by just watching our channel. So there you go. <laughs> our Rod's channel, our show, I mean. I don't have a channel. <laughs> Neither does Tom. <laughs> just just moving in. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm setting up a residency. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that all being said, thanks for swinging by to check out another show. And next week we'll get Joe to get a little more quicker to your comments for sure. No, nah. two weeks, but yeah, I'll take a longer time and make sure like I don't even read them. Especially if it's dry, if it's Redbeard again, totally not reading them. Just telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have another brewery to hopefully talk about at that point. That being said, cheers, and we'll catch you next time. Go ahead and get your beer on.